see him anywhere. I don't know where he is. If he's, not here, if he's not here in 15 if minutes, minutes, we're about to leave. Oh, yeah, that's really good. That's right. Right. I signed paper a bit said so. All right, class, settle down, settle down, oh, settle down. I'm a little late. Uh, I had to lay pipe on a bitch, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, of course. But it was bussing. Respectfully. All right, class. This is an advanced course. I hope you all know what you signed up for here at uh, Stupid Palooza University. Uh, well, we only accept the best. That you put the best and you get the best. I don't know. Where did I get that from? <laughs> I think it's from John Tron. Uh, anyways, we're going to be covering the advanced course on The Legend of Zelda, the in between and the out betweens, and the tweens within. What does that mean? It means I'm not really going to be talking about the games. Any, any mention... <laughs> fuck the games. <laughs> games don't fucking matter. It's a lecture on the timeline. It's not a lecture on the games. What? Ow, whoops, whatever. I didn't write this shit. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure we were on the same page. Not a lecture on the games. That's a typo. I'll listen to what you say, not what you write. Yeah, fuck whoever wrote this. It wasn't me. And if it was me, yeah, I was drunk. <laughs> not a lecture on. It is a lecture on the timeline, not a lecture on the games. So. Any information that is presented is mostly about everything that happens between and after, between games and sometimes after games that end up being the end of their specific branch. So, to start where most, oh shit, where most of us should start, that is the wrong song. Got it. Shut the fuck up. All right. Actually, to start, to keep activity going, we are going to have a, a little game that we're going to play. Whoever doesn't play the game, gets a demerit. <laughs> Three demerits and you know the rules. So, I don't know the, rules. the rules is, three demerits, you eat a ghost pepper on camera. <laughs> the rule is, I'm going to stop and I'm going to say, hey! And you are going to say, listen. <laughs> You are going to oh, say. Okay. You're going to repeat back to me. Listen. Okay. All right. So let's practice it now. All right. Blah 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 blah. Not a lecture on the timeline typo. Hey. Listen. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let's start off at the beginning. And the beginning happens. Ah, fuck of all. I know when the fuck the beginning happens. But it does eventually happen. There is a point in time where there is chaos in the universe. It has a lot of origins for every single game and every single universe. The world and the universe is in chaos until three goddesses of this universe decide to do something about it. The goddess Din, you're about to get a demerit, good sir. You were about to speak. <laughs> what is your question? You said three. I'm getting there. Okay, okay. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting there. Okay, okay, okay. These are just visual aids. So these three goddesses, they're considered, they, I will be referring to them either by, as the goddesses, as the golden goddesses, or by their names. The red one, Din. The green one, Faror. The blue one, Nehru. One, of the, one day, or one concept of time before days existed, Din, the goddess of power, decided to mold the red earth. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom, decided to create the spirit of the law. Essentially, she created time. She created... Honestly, it's kind of the biggest thing. She created time. And Faror, the goddess of courage, or would later be known as the goddess of courage, created creatures who would uphold the law. Any and all life. Sentient life, anyways. Let me see here. Cool. 
with their labors completed, they left at a specific point in this world that they had created a representation of their own power as a use for mortals to be able to shape the earth without their necessary intervention. This would become, later would become known as the Triforce, which is not shown here. It will be show up eventually. And it was given to the protection of the white goddess, Hylia, to protect. And with it, she was tasked to protect all of their creations. As a ton of time passed, the land became known as the land of Hylia. Before any kingdoms were established, before any villages really had names, there were just a couple of races that began to sprout out. A couple of notable ones were the rock people, the Gorons. Honestly, that's the, the more notable ones. The rock people, Gorons, are just big chubby dudes that are made out of rock. Uh, the Kikwi, which are these penguin-like slash plant-like animals. The Magma, which are... I lost a word. Not beavers, moles. Uh, da, 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 the Perella, which are these fish-like, umbrella-like beings uh, who live in lakes and river systems. And the Hylians, or rather just humans. They eventually became, or treated themselves as the children of Hylia, and eventually that evolved to them referring to themselves as Hylians. So, our story really takes place once Hylians have established a couple of settlements across what they consider to be known as the land of Hylia, and Hylia, really not having made herself known, uh, was their chosen protector, specifically the protector of the Triforce. That is her number one duty. She herself is a goddess who serves under the three golden goddesses, and it kind of already establishes a hierarchy of goddesses. Uh, this is not really a spoiler. The introduction of Hylia within the games through everything we knew about the creation of what eventually would become the land of Hyrule, out of the fucking window. Because that means that there is entirely, the, the, there is 100% a chance that these four goddesses are not the only goddesses that exist in this realm. It's just that these are the only four that have uh, come up in the legends of someone named Zelda that we haven't gone into yet. So, to reiterate, Din is the power of Din is the goddess of power who is associated with fire, with the color red, and with the earth. Paror is associated with courage, wind, and the color green, and generally creatures. And Nehru is associated with the power of wisdom, or she's she is the goddess of wisdom associated with water, the color blue, and largely with time. Cool, 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 cool. We already talked about that. Talked about that. Excellent. All right. So we talked about the goddesses. Now we have to, before we jump into the first relevant story, we have to start talking about the demon tribe. We have no fucking idea where they came from. And it could only be assumed that they were themselves were created by the three goddesses. They are described as literally just coming out of the fucking ground and said, Hey, I like that. I want it. And so they fucking did. They just decided to wreck shit up. Go ahead. So we have three goddesses of like fire, earth, and water. And Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And like the other things. And we have Hyrule. Yep. Light. Yep. So do we have a goddess or divine of darkness, which is where the demons would come from? We have no confirmation. It is entirely possible that the demons themselves are divine in nature. We, we, never have, we never got true confirmation if they are divine in nature. The Triforce does have a caveat when it was created, that only mortals are able to make wishes on it. So the Hylia herself cannot make a wish on it. The demons wanted to get to the Triforce. Maybe they didn't know that caveat. Maybe they did. But they never even, even got, well, they got pretty close. But they never had the chance to actually test it. It's entirely possible, and it's a common theory before the official timeline came out in the Hyrule Historia that there was a fourth goddess before Hylia was revealed that was the goddess of darkness to counteract that they usually partake in things that uh, revolve around the power of light. But then they, Nintendo just decided to create a goddess of light. It's entirely possible it's a goddess of darkness. 
Uh, there is a game further down in the timeline that kind of plays around with that idea. But it doesn't really revolve around this anymore. It's mostly just playing on parallel universes. <laughs> but uh, good question. So uh, what else do we have to talk about here before we move on to? Oh, yes. No one fucking knows who they are. <laughs> <laughs> they, we, there are a couple of uh, cosmic beings, or rather just more divine-like creatures uh, that are aware of the existence and creation of the world through these three goddesses. No fucking human, no tribe knows who the fuck these people are. Uh, some invent their own goddesses, which uh, maybe is a soft hint of like, oh yeah, we kind of heard tales of, of, let's say, Din, but most races just have their own patron deities who are godlike in the sense that they're just very powerful or very old, therefore wise. <laughs> but no one, there is no church of the goddess of Din uh, for Oroneru or of Hylia for, that, Hylia for that reason after a certain amount of time. It's just, <laughs> uh, hey, we're here. Why are we called Hylians? I don't fucking know. But we're here, you know, it's, it's wild. No one ever talks about them in any, like, established religion. All right. So, most of the timeline is split into eras. And the first era is the era of the goddess Hylia. And there is, the first game in the timeline is Skyward Sword. But before Skyward Sword happens is the actual war between the goddess Hylia and the demon tribe that happens 1,000 years before the events of Skyward Sword, roughly. And there is a story told during the war that kicks things off, and it is only explained in a manga, where we have the first Link to ever appear, only known as Link the Hero. That's his name. <laughs> is his last name the Hero? I don't know, could be. Link the Hero suffered a pretty uh, tragic life for the most part. Uh, he was a pretty celebrated knight, generally uh, was a pretty good guy. He helped around, he killed some baddies, killed some uh, beasts. But four years before the demon tribe that declared war on the land of Hylia, uh, there was this king, which I, what the fuck was his name? Not the, uh, fuck, I lost his name. No! Dagianus. A King Dagianus who, with some malicious intent, didn't really like Link. He was taking a lot of thunder from him. He was really powerful. He's really hot. He was taking a lot <laughs> he was taking a lot out of him. So once Link the hero began to have premonitions that something horrible was going to happen, Link, uh, Lord Dagianus had him imprisoned and his sword broken. And his story begins four years after his imprisonment with the actual, be the war beginning maybe a year before his, he's actually released with the murder of Lord Dagianus by the demon tribe because they didn't actually believe <laughs> that he was uh, having premonitions of the demon, the demon tribe actually attacking the land. Uh, once everyone was like, holy shit, he was right. What the fuck did we do? They immediately rush after him. And uh, this is really fucking badass. It's kind of cheesy in a way, but it's so... It's absolutely badass that they come up to him and he's like, well, you all fuckers imprisoned me here. Now I don't want to help you. And it's like, no, we're really, we're losing out here. We, we are not going to win without your help. So they present to him a fully remade sword and his armor. And that's when he's like, well, if you wake the lion, then you got to, what do you say? He will bear his fangs. Confirmed lions in the world of Hyrule also, or the world of Legend of Zelda. We've never seen lions, but there's a, he's talking about lions, so you know, wild. Da, 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 da. Excellent, all right. So this is where I'll probably look more at my notes. Question for the, uh, the man in glasses. There's it's a lot less, of people. It's less of a question, more of a, I just, I really gotta say this. Yeah. This is fucking sick shit. That, yeah. That panel specifically is better. He's hot as fuck, That's isn't he? So cool. <laughs> That's all. I to, I right. I'm sorry. I get it. Yeah. So they give him his iconic clothes, or the the, the clothes that would become iconic. Uh, he gets his sword and he begins to hold this mass meeting on top of a castle. 
What's going on over here? <laughs> is there some is there some type of I was just pointing I was like, that's so cool. Well let me catch you again. Oh you're getting the merit. Yes, sir. Sorry, Professor. anyways. Whoa god, I lost it. Here we go. So the he uh he gathers a bunch of his old buddies. They go on top of a castle and they declare, Hey, fuck the demons! We're gonna kick their asses! I am the protector of the land of Hylia. This is Link the Hero talking. I will be the knight of the goddess Hylia. And at that moment, most people begin to panic as they see like this aerial dot that soon appro is approaching really quickly towards the scene of the crime. Uh, and they begin to fire arrows at it. And these arrows are just getting reflected back and forth. And by the time that this person arrives, it is the goddess Hylia who, is, for the first time, has revealed herself to her people on top of a crimson loft wing, which is just a giant ass bird. And the bird immediately, who is able to talk, is like, Why are we here, goddess? Uh, they literally cannot tell the difference between a goddess and the demons that are trying to kill them. Your worthy hero isn't here. Uh, and the link just kind of walks up all big balls. He's like, hey, pal, yeah, some of these guys are kind of sacks of shit, but me and my buddies, we're tough shit. We have a lot of courage. Hello? So, Link the hero declared that he was the knight of Hylia? Yeah. He himself declared he himself. he didn't know who Hylia was, right? Mm. No one knew. Okay. They had ideas. That they were Hylians because there was a goddess Hylia. This is the first time, and let me swap to a different panel. Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. Let me swap to a different panel. He dies. Anyways. <laughs> uh, no one had ever met the goddess Hylia before. Spoilers. <laughs> no one had met the goddess Hylia. They had ideas that they were created by a goddess called Hylia. Like I said, they literally know nothing about Din for or Nehru. It's entirely possible. He really, he declared himself the knight of the goddess Hylia before the review of the goddess Hylia ever came across the Hylians. Go ahead. Okay, the Hylians. Yeah. Human. They're all human. The, uh, the Elfiers have nothing to do with it. No, I mean, they're human as in they're humanoid. Okay. Uh, most, all the races are considered human okay. for the most part. Uh, okay. Yeah, but the Hylians are, I guess we'll get into this right now. The Hylians are people that Hylia herself considers her people. And it's kind of like, uh, created in my image type of deal. She, they look like me, so they are mine. Uh, they, they got special treatment too. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. So you're telling me there's racism? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> there is heavy <laughs> racism within this entire series. Go ahead. No, actually, Mo some links are kind of racist. Some links are actually kind of racist. Link the hero, uh, we don't know. We don't know, actually. He might have been racist. We, I, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> but most links aren't racist. <laughs> There's two that I can think of that absolutely were racist, though. <laughs> Absolutely. And maybe racist by ignorance, less than racist by uh, malice, but still racist nonetheless. Good question. <laughs> oh my god. Cool. So the goddess kind of, no rather, the Crimson Lost Wing is like, all right, big balls, you think you're tough shit? Let me see what you can do. And he flies away. <laughs> He essentially challenges, like, you know, you're saying you're tough shit, then prove to me you're tough shit. And at that moment, the goddess Hylia bestows upon Link the hero her own sword, whoop, that she is carrying. Ah, oh, look, I skipped this slide. I am the white goddess Hylia. That's a reveal picture. Uh, but she is wielding a sword that would become known as the goddess sword. She attempts to offer it to Link, who kind of has a real dark, edgy moment, where he's like, go ahead. Is that sword the very same sword that you're currently holding? No. 
No. <laughs> no. Okay, this is just an artistic representation, but it is not the same sword that I am holding. Go ahead. You're holding the sword, does that make you literally? No. You're getting ahead of the You're getting ahead of the lecture. Yeah, someone had to hear it. Uh, no, the, the same sword I am holding is not the same sword that she bestows to Link the hero. Uh, but anyways, he has a big, dark, edgy moment. It was like, well, I don't know. I was imprisoned, and I honestly... All these guys are kind of schmucks, except for the guys that are willing to fight the demons. Uh, I don't think I'm worthy of the sword. But the goddess Heidi is like, oh, let the sword decide. Because honestly, I'm, you know, look at me, look at you. Like, who's really to decide who's worthy or not? She hands him the sword, and the sword does technically accept him. Well then highly enforce them. Anyways, it doesn't actually matter if you accepted the sword or not, because you have to reforge it. This is a godly divine artifact. A mortal can't really wield it. It's the reverse of the Triforce, as established before, where only a mortal can wield the Triforce. You have to unmake it and reforge it for it to actually serve under you. So he did. They just go through an intense blacksmithing session, as one does. And they reforge the goddess sword, put in their blood, sweat, and tears, and Link, the hero, is actually able to wield the goddess sword with the same divine light that the goddess Hylia had bestowed upon them. So, they're all prepped, and they say, all right, fuck it, you know, we got the goddess Hylia on our side. We got this fucking dude, he's kind of a chad, and he's got a fucking cool-ass sword. Let's go fight some demons, bro. <laughs> and so, for seven days and seven nights, they start to repel the demon tribe war, who is desperately trying to conquer all of the land of Hylia. And they're fucking losing. So they gather, uh, Hylia gathers the allies of all humans, the Gorons, the Perellas, the uh, Magma, all of them, to drive back the demon forces. And they start winning until the demon king of the demon tribe makes his appearance and Link is the first one to encounter him. That this slide starts to become pretty, <laughs> pretty relevant. Link is the first one to encounter him, and you know, he, he puts up his sword and he's like, all right, you know, I may not be able to defeat you, but I'm certainly going to try to hold you off for as long as possible. He doesn't last one fucking second. Immediately, he takes a mortal wound to his, uh, to his, uh, uh, right, somewhere, uh, I'm mean, he's just disappointed. Right, right there, right there. He takes a pretty mortal wound from what was pretty much just a claw attack. Uh, and he's done. He's knocked the fuck out. The goddess sword goes flying away. Uh, and the demon king just like, that was, that was easy. <laughs> I thought you were supposed to be the goddess, the legendary knight of the goddess Hylia, who you were so self-proclaimed. Uh, but at that moment, the crimson lost wing kind of takes a little bit of pity and flies down and catches Link the hero where Crimson Offing is like, all right, you were pretty tough shit. Like, yeah, you, you lost to the Demon King, but it took the Demon King to bring you down. That's kind of a big deal. So the Crimson Offing says, you and I, we're going to be flying forever. And Link the hero makes a similar promise. It's like, you and I will fly for eternity. They fly and they get to the goddess Hylia where Link is clearly extremely injured. But at this moment, the goddess Hylia is already coming up with a plan to save her own people, specifically the Hylians, where she grabs the goddess sword from Link and she rends a shit ton of the earth and she uh, sends her own temple. Where, like I said, the only, the, only, the only goddess that they believed existed was the goddess Hylia. They had a temple for her. She rends up a shit ton of the earth and she starts to send it up to the sky. Excuse me. She starts to send it up to the sky and she hands the sword back to Link where everyone is pretty much begging like, Link, go to the fucking light. Come up here with us, please. Like, you, you are the only reason that we are escaping this war. Now, granted, the Hylia is doing most of the heavy lifting, but, you know, he's the only one who actually managed to put a dent into the demon tribe's attacks if it wasn't for his own courage. But he essentially proclaims, right here actually, that he wishes he could, but his body was really, really heavy. 
and he just didn't have it in him. And after receiving the sword again from Hylia, he slams it down to the ground and connects it to that same light where he created a connection between the sword, the floating landmass, and the surface. Uh, just a general magical connection that we'll just see use later down the line. But it, uh, to him it was symbolic that no matter where they go, even above the skies, he has struck the Master Sword down where you can always come back. Because this was a last, this last ditch effort for the Goddess Hylia. Go ahead. Okay, you just called it the Master Sword. So the Reforged Goddess Sword. The Goddess Sword. It's still okay. the Goddess Sword. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't want to catch you yeah. in you, were, you caught me lacking. You caught me lacking. It is still the Goddess Sword. It is still the Goddess Sword. Uh, it is not called the Master Sword yet. Uh, he makes that connection, sends it, uh, creates that connection, creates that bond between the surface and the sky, and the goddess Hylia then creates a giant cloud barrier that becomes impenetrable to the demon tribe specifically. And after she's done with that, uh, not clearly have carried the war enough, completely seals the demon king into from seals the demon king into the land that she just uprooted from the earth. Knowing that that seal was kind of shaky. She realized she only had one big brain power play to make. She walked up to Link, and she had a couple, apparently, so she had a lot of emotions going up through her head. Uh, one heavily involving Link, and the other realizing that that seal wasn't actually going to hold. So she walks up to Link, the dying Link, actually now, the now dead Link, because after he made that seal, he did pass away, and she takes him back up to the heavens where she promises, like, she is full of regret that Link the hero was really just a pawn in destiny. Uh, he suffered a lot early in life. He suffered a lot, in the, a lot in the middle of life, getting imprisoned and not being believed. And then he suffered at the very end, not being able to escape with his fellow Hylians, even though he did express actually wanting to go up with them. He just physically couldn't. Uh, the goddess Hylia expressing a lot of sorrow makes a promise that the next time they meet, they will be able to stand by next to each other as friends. She was also <laughs> having a big brain moment where she may need to use the power of the Triforce. No one really knows the Triforce exists except for her. She is meant to keep it a secret from everybody, including the Hylians. So she releases her divine powers and becomes immortal and kills herself, essentially, where she seals the fate of Link and her own fate, that every time that one of them incarnates, so will the other. And that's, that's it. That is everything leading up to the first game, which is Skyward Sword. Go ahead. That's the game of bomb bowling, right? <laughs> Wait, what? Bomb bowling? Bomb bowling? Absolutely, this is the game with bomb bowling. Good. Breath of the Wild? Breath of the Wild, B-O-T-W. Yep. I thought that was the first game in the timeline. No, uh, that is actually the last game in the timeline. I, I had it back You know, I it was, you had it, you had the right idea. I knew it was somewhere. Yeah? You, you knew it was somewhere. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead. Yes, so, if this is the first game in the series today, yep. is there a reason why we don't have any explanation for like, Is there a reason that we don't see the what? Uh, the advanced technology of the robots still in the desert. Uh, we talk, we'll talk about it in a bit. I'll talk about it in the game. Yeah, I'll talk about it while we're talking about Skyward Sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That's the merit. <laughs> Go ahead. This shit do be busted, actually. This shit do be busted. Yeah. Skyward Sword is a pretty flawed game in a lot of ways. It's super lore heavy. And also the relationship between Zelda and Link is the most precious like relationship they've ever created in all those other games. Go ahead. Respectfully? 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, this shit, this shit busted respectfully. <laughs> oh my god. So before we really get into the nitty gritty of the Skyward Sword, we have to talk about one final thing, and it's the concept of what are sword spirits, which aren't really super explained. But there are only two sword spirits known in existence. One of, and they both appear in this game and never appear again. <laughs> Nor the concept of them ever existing. There are nods to it, but it's not a true confirmation. So you don't, we don't really... We take it into consideration, but it's not something that fully confirms or denies the existence of sword spirits later down in the games. Uh, one of them resides inside the goddess sword, which would later become the master sword, spoilers. And the other resides inside the sword of the Demon King, who seal, as mentioned before, would eventually wouldn't last forever, and is the main premise of Skyward Sword, that the seal is breaking loose and they need to stop him. Go ahead. So then the sword you get, it becomes the master sword in the game, was the original sword of the goddess? Was the original sword of the goddess that was reforged by Link the Hero and company. Uh, oh, uh, that's important, yes. When Hylia is sending, when Hylia is done with Link's dead body, she also sends her own harp, the Triforce, no, she sends clues, it's almost like she was making a game or something, she, she sends clues to the existence of the Triforce, the goddess sword itself, forged by uh, Link and company, and her own harp. She was relinquishing all of her divinity, so she was sending all of her divine items up with her own people. It's one hell of a... She makes one hell of an ARG. And the thing is, the entire game, we are told... Since I said we're not really talking about the games, I'm going to briefly talk about the games. But the entire fucking game, we're like, and here's another test that Hylia made up. And here's another test that Hylia came up with. And here's another test that Hylia came up with. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? She knew Link the hero for seven days. And she was like, he's gonna reincarnate one day and I'm gonna need to know if it's him or not. So I came up with all these tests before she releases her, di divine, her divinity. It's, it's one hell of an ARG. I fucking hate it. It took quite a few games to get it right. Huh? It took him quite a few games to get it right then. Nah, I just took him this game. Yeah, the when she releases the divinity and becomes mortal. Yeah. Just because she really like. Uh. This shit. So, yeah. But she knows she's gonna reincarnate. She when does. She reincarnates. Yeah. Is she no longer a goddess? Is she in within a mortal? She, she put her soul in a constant state of reincarnation, and every time she reincarnates, she does not know that she used to be the goddess Hylia. Like she, she 100% is hoping that that her reincarnation figures it out. Otherwise, things aren't going to look so good. Do you answer why she did this at any point in this lecture? Why? Uh, no. The, the answer was she was really hoping it would work. It was a last ditch effort. It really was. She knew the seal wasn't going to hold, which is why she released her divinity so she could use the Triforce as a mortal and stop Demise. That makes more yeah. sense. I forgot that like, she used the Triforce to do all this. Yeah, Sorry. she can't use the Triforce because she is a goddess. That she is bound to protect the Triforce. She never revealed the location of the Triforce to even her own people. And when she sealed the eyes and said, "This shit ain't bussin," disrespectfully, this shit ain't bussin. So she said, <laughs> since she can't tell anyone else the Triforce exists, she, she will do it herself. herself. I'll, I'll do, do it myself. myself. Yup. And she, right. aside from having a big hard on for Link the Hero. <laughs> also says, fine, I'll do it myself, and relinquishes her divinity. And sets both Link's soul and her own soul in a state of reincarnation. Cool. Alright, so now officially entering the era of the sky. We, the settlement that she sent up eventually becomes known as the town of Skyloft. Which is a loft 
in the sky. Wild. Where there is the remains of the temple of Hylia. Everyone there loves Hylia. At this point, they still don't consider themselves Hylians, but they are Hylians. Go ahead. How did the log get to the sky? Uh, it was sent up there by the goddess Hylia. She rent, yeah, she rendered the earth with the goddess sword and just sent it up there. With, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, yep. Yep, 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 like, there's no, there's magic. <laughs> God is magic, bro. Uh, and we have Link. Uh, let's, uh, let, let me note the notable characters of this story. We have Link, we have Zelda, obviously. The, these are both the reincarnations of Link the hero and of the goddess Hylia. In fact, she is the first reincarnation of the goddess Hylia. We have Groos. <laughs> a beloved character of the Legend of Zelda series. And he is so goddamn important to fucking everything in this entire game. Even Nintendo loves this man. It's fucking wild. And we have Girahim, who is also very important. He has a lot of blast energy. And we have uh, Impa, who is also largely important. We'll get back to her. Don't worry about her. And we have Demise, which is the demon king that was uh, that fought Link the hero, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the more important characters of this story. And just to quickly summarize the story, as it's not really that important, go ahead. Uh, is Demise related to the original demon king? He is the original demon oh, king. He is the, he is the original oh, demon king. Just, yeah. Those are the important characters of this game. And to quickly go over the general idea of what this game tried to cover, Link and Zelda are really good friends. Really good friends. Groose really likes Zelda. Really likes Zelda. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Link is just kind of a big old himbo airhead who doesn't know what the fuck's going on half the time. Uh, and he also has this Crimson Loftwing which is most likely either an incarnation or the same Crimson Loftwing who was like, we will fly forever, uh, finding the soul of the reincarnated Link the Hero. Uh, Gruus is jealous that he has that bird. Everyone really is jealous that this fucking loser with no parents for some reason <laughs> uh, has like this stupid fast bird and he's also stupid good at flying and he's really good at using the sword Everyone was just kind of jealous. Zelda's just like, no, we're homies, but like, I kind of want to fuck you. Uh, look at those eyes. Like, really? Uh, <laughs> um, yes, anyways. You re they reach a point where Zelda gets brought down under the uh, cloud barrier that Goddess Hylia had put up. Go ahead. Are Groose's Groose relevant to Absolutely not. <laughs> not to the information I'm trying to convey. Uh, like, I could have a whole lecture on Skyward Sword because there are some amazing side characters in this game, including Groose's Goods. I love Groose's Goods. But they're not actually important past their own relevant life. Um, not really. Uh, yes, so Zelda eventually gets dragged down by a voice that she hears in her head. And eventually a tornado grabs her from the air. She just gets sucked down. And Link's like, well, shit, not my best friend. He essentially just sneaks out of the school before a sword spirit, Fee, finds her and says, hey, you're the chosen hero, FYI. He's like, oh, fuck, all right, bet, respectfully. He follows her, he follows the sword spirit, finds the goddess sword, which is just implanted into the pedestal, pulls it out, and he's like, oh, cool, I'm the chosen hero. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of stuff in my life is starting to make sense now. <laughs> and he <laughs> he follows uh, he he descends into the what is currently called the surface, where he finds well, him too, but where he finds this old woman, uh, who essentially just says, "Oh yeah, I saw that girl come around here. She went that way." <clears throat> and also, did you see that shit? There's a demon there. That seal's getting weaker. I don't know who you are, but you should do something about it. Wink. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he's like, all right, priorities. Get my dick wet first, follow Zelda, Demon King later. He follows uh, in the footsteps of Zelda, coming across 
the three major provinces of the surface. The desert province, the, the volcano province, and the forest province, named whoops, the Laneru province, the Elden province, and the Farren province. I almost forgot it. Uh, named after the goddesses, but also named after these dragons that say they are blessings of the goddesses that exist to just kind of convey their will without them being without the three goddesses directly intervening with the affairs of mortals in truth the goddesses do not give a shit what's happening with the mortal world they left the triforce so they can figure that shit out on their own the only time they do intervene is when it actually affects the triforce itself anything that would directly mean that people can no longer use the Triforce, that's when they're like, eh, actually that shit ain't bussin'. Disrespectfully, and does something about it. Other than that, they don't really give a fuck, and we have plenty of proof that they do not give a fuck for what reason the Triforce gets used. Way later down the road, uh, when the Triforce is misused plenty of times for the forces of evil. Uh, Link throughout these trials, starts to imbue this goddess sword with the flames of the original goddesses, where it eventually becomes the master sword. Uh, the entire trial process is meant to, which was set up by Hylia, as is previously said, was meant to fully realize the potential of the master sword back into the full potential it had when it belonged to Hylia. A real, real workaround system. They had to, <laughs> she had to give away her sword so it could lose all of its power, so you could make it all over again and have pretty similar, but not exactly the same amount of power. Wild shit. I don't know. Highly is on some shit. Go ahead. Can the Master Sword ever get back to its original state? No. Once, just like how Hylia was never, or rather Zelda, or the incarnation of Hylia, has never been able to go back to being a goddess, it's the same for her sword. Once it lost all of its divine uh, power, it can get pretty close uh, throughout this entire game. That's the entire purpose. And it's trying to get back to the place where it kind of began, but as the fully realized potential of the chosen hero, which is, no, sorry. I shouldn't use the word the chosen hero because he is the chosen hero. It's of Link, the hero. Most of all the Zeldas, according to that manga, are a way to restore that connection between Link the hero, the goddess of Hylia, and the sword that she bestowed to him. Uh, so did Link the hero choose who he wanted to go into when he reincarnated into this Link, the chosen mm. hero? No, they have no choice. Uh, they, like, he is him. Like, it's just like, he just pops out. He's mag it gets magically influenced in the womb. <laughs> that he's going to be a reincarnation of Link the Hero. Uh, he has no choice. He doesn't know that he's Link the Hero either. He, in fact, they never, they usually tell him, oh yeah, you're destined for great things, boy. Yeah, it's you. And he's like, I'm me, yeah. <laughs> uh, every Link has drastically different personalities. None of them seeming to have the exact same vigor that Link the Hero had. Uh, this one being more of a goofy Link, uh, it's very, Lacks a day ago, very relaxed link. Uh, yes, so he eventually gets the Master Sword following Zelda. Zelda is being followed by Girahim, who is a demon who is trying to, well, steal Zelda and use her in some manner or another because he discovered that Zelda is the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia to resurrect or rather unseal. Demise, which is the Demon King that Hylia had sealed 1,000 years ago. Some shenanigans happen. Hmm? Do you know why he wants to unseal Demise during the prior relationship? Yes, we do. We do know why he, w he wants to resurrect Demise. We'll get there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's just this cat and mouse chase where they eventually reach the point where they find a couple of structures that seem to be able to reverse time to 1,000 years into the past. 
Uh, these things are called time shift stones, or at least they're named time shift stones, that are able to revert the ground around them, not necessarily sentient life. Well, that's not true. Maybe just not the wielder. Unclear. It reverts area around that time shift stone 1,000 years into the past. And within this same desert, they also find what was already known as the Temple of Time, which had this giant gear. I wish I should have pulled the picture of that. It has this giant gear that when you activate it, links that specific gear to another point in time at the specific location 1,000 years into the past. Gearhom is in hot pursuit. Zelda and Impa, which is this bitch, which also shares the name with that bitch, for some reason. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> I, I don't really care. They are the same person. Uh, they are. They are the same person. I'll, I'll explain to that later. But, God, oh God Skyward Sword's such a fucking mess. This is already, Skyward Sword, the first game in the timeline, already has a time loop set in place. Uh, that just circles and circles until it finally breaks out. Uh, Zelda goes into the past, giving Link the harp of the goddess that she found on her own. And with that harp, Link is able to begin to start the ARG that Hylia set to find the Triforce. And not just one by one. Not the Triforce is like uh, the golden triangles that is very iconic with the Legend of Zelda. But they can be split into the different triangles themselves. Link's ARG takes place in the Silent Realm, which in, it makes more of a sense to describe it in D&D terms than anything else that I've ever been able to describe. There is such a thing in D&D called the Ethereal Realm, which is just a realm that still exists within the material plane that you can tap into and it just kind of looks like a hazy version of everything. Uh, it's, it's an in-between plane between planes. That is the Silent Realm. We find out through her ARG that she hid the Triforce inside a specific location, like a real physical location, which was underneath her own statue inside that silent realm. So he goes through all those ARGs, he goes, he backtracks the entire land, he's, you know, he's doing shit, he's killing monsters, uh, he's following orders, he's meeting a bunch of people. And he realizes that the answers he had were just at home the entire time. Where he goes back up, he enters the silent realm underneath a dungeon beneath the temple, or rather the statue of the goddess Hylia. And he finds himself being able to wield the full extent of the Triforce. Uh, he collects both the Triforce of power, courage, of wisdom, and he releases it on top of the uh, temple of Hylia, the goddess of Hylia. And he makes a simple wish. Fuck the Mize. And the wish was like, bet. The entire fucking Skyloft crashes back down to where the seal that the Mize is in, completely destroying the Mize, well, the seal which also kills the Mize in the process. And suddenly, all of Skyloft, well, not all of Skyloft, specifically the statue, a solid chunk of Skyloft is now back on the surface. Everyone's happy. Uh, Zelda's happy, Impa's happy. There was a point in time where Groose eventually just fucking skydives after seeing that Link. Like, like, hey, what the fuck's Link doing? It's fucking little shit. Uh, Zelda's gone. I thought he was supposed to be depressed. I'm depressed. Why isn't he depressed? And he sees Link just jump into the fucking clouds, and Groose is like, bet. <laughs> and Groose fucking jumps down. Do with him. Link has a parachute. Yeah. Is this the moment in the timeline where the is first loose? This is the moment in the timeline <laughs> where the Groose is set loose, baby. Uh, and actually, this is a pretty good uh, good point to start talking about Groose. Groose, he's a bully. He really is. But he isn't evil. Uh, he doesn't like change, and he likes things to be his way. And he just kind of doesn't like Link because. He feels that he's had it really easy his entire life, but he had to work to where he was. Like, you know, look at this man. This man's built like a pompadour. You know, that pompadour don't grow itself. That's a lot of hair product. It is valid. 
for me guessing it, you get a demerit. Oh. <laughs> that is two demerits of me. Uh, he isn't evil, though, and uh, he lands on the servers about halfway through the game, where he actually starts to talk a lot with old Imba, while Link is off doing, you know, while Link is off doing an ARG, uh, and he learns a lot about the destiny that Link has with Zelda, and uh, essentially, he, Impa tells him, "You're going to be an infinite cuck if you try to keep on going with Zelda, because they are destined to be together." Uh, and Gru does eventually like, give up on Zelda, uh, realizing that his role is to support his, his fellow Hylians, his fellow Link, oh, his fellow Link, his fellow Hylians, his fellow Knight uh, Academy students. Well, I guess Link became a Knight, he's still a student. Uh, that's his role in life, and so he actually realized he's pretty damn good with his hands. He builds an entire fucking rail system around uh, the Mise Zeal before the entire fucking statue went back down and crushed Demise. Uh, it helped Link reseal Demise a couple of times that he was trying to come out. Groos is a fucking... Where's Groos? Groos is a fucking badass. He is the bestest boy. Top three bestest boys in the entire series. Go ahead. Yeah. That's no, 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 no. He created a uh, rail system that surrounded the chunk of land that Hylia took out to surround the seal. Okay. And like that's that rail really system was loaded with tracks of bombs that he would just bombard down to Demise to help Link seal it back in whenever it, it threatens to break loose. That's still really It's pretty how, rad. How he had no... It took, was, that's really impressive. it took him maybe like a couple... Maybe canonically like a couple of months for him to invent a rail system and then realize he could use living bombs as actual bombs and then use those actual bombs to just generally help Link. He became a pretty good guy. I, you know, he's still a little bit of a jerk. But he's a pretty good guy. Also, the moment he fucking landed and, he, and after having that shock that there was something beneath the clouds, the first thing, one of the first things he said is, I'm going to make this into Groose land. <laughs> Uh, you raise your hand, David? Nah? Yeah, you don't want to start the marriage, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's Groose. Uh, and like I said, Groose really... Uh, he started to really adore Old Imba. Really, really started to like her. She had a lot of wisdom to share. It uh, really changed a lot about his heart, the way he viewed the world and uh, just a general role in life not necessarily to always be support but to help your fellow friends when they need it because uh throughout this entire series like i said link this link he had courage but his courage only comes because he was so goddamn afraid in fact every time there was a cutscene a dungeon that you would go into in the game the very first dungeon that he goes into every single time oh, hold on, let me every time he goes into a dungeon that cuts he plays it really zooms in onto his face the very first dungeon that he goes into, there is a very clear expression of fear and worry of like, I may not make, out of, make it out of here alive before he goes in. And throughout the game, every time it plays that cutscene, there's a little bit more and more courage behind that face. But my man was still going through it. Uh, he really wanted his best friend back. He needed his dick wet. But no, like, she is the only person that has ever actually cared for him. He had no parents. He had no friends, aside from Zelda. <laughs> Uh, everyone bullied him. Like, he, he kind of used his Crimson Loft Wing to escape Skyloft every time he would just, like, laxadaily uh, fly around uh, Skyloft. And people judged him for that, including Groos. So, Groose kind of finding out the error of his ways uh, is a really big deal that comes into play later. Uh, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> the temple is crushed down, everyone's happy. And bada big! Gerahum shows up, and he's like, Bet, you killed Demise right now, but you have a giant fucking gear that connects us to 1,000 years in the past, like almost moments after the goddess Hylia sent uh, the earth up to the sky and relinquished her divine form. 
I'm just gonna go awaken him then. He grabs Zelda, he blasts Link. There's this really fucking cool moment where Gruus is like shaking, but he's like, you ain't getting past me, bud. And he also places him fro himself in front of Impa. Uh, he's like, you ain't getting past me. He gets past him. Uh, <laughs> and he takes Zelda back to the past where he begins the ritual to suck out the remaining soul of the goddess, place it into the seal and undo the seal. Link ain't having none of that shit. And this is where we find out what Giraham is. Like I mentioned before, there's only one game that the mention of sword spirits ever exists. And we find out that Giratim himself, a self-proclaimed demon lord, is actually just the sword spirit of the demon kingdom eyes. Go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, you would turn around when you said it, each time you said it. Uh, he was, there was only one other time where what? There was only one other time where sword spirits are mentioned. Okay. Uh, the sword spirit Fee helps Link guide him to the goddess sword and generally just guides him and everything like she is just a creation of the goddess Hylia to help her hero of any incarnation the same existed for demise apparently where his sword became sentient and is just trying to help him break loose it was probably demise's last last ditch effort to attempt to re-unseal himself by having his sword become sentient in the form of Girahim and that is who Girahim is uh, Link fights Girahim, deals a mortal wound, well, mortal wound as much as he can for a sword before he reveals. Anyways, it actually didn't matter that you interrupted me. Uh, this magic is on autopilot. <laughs> and uh, Demise does get unsealed. And at Girahim's final moments, go ahead. Why does Girahim as a sword spirit look different than he as a sword spirit? Uh, they look remarkably similar to the sword that they inhabit. And Fee generally looks really sleek and slender, like the goddess sword. She looks more like the goddess sword than the master sword. Uh, Girahim is jagged and uh, white and black, because that is how Demise's sword, which has no official name, looks like. It's this jagged black, uh, kind of looks like a lightning bolt type of sword. Uh, that's the only reason that they look different. Uh, da -da -da -da, is there, I think it's the only picture I have of Girahim. Uh, Girahim does have a red type of jewel on him uh, and Fee also has a blue type of jewel on her that is the only type of detail that has they share that same detail in different colors go ahead I don't know if I'm myself but this is also the first time we see Impa right? this, like, this is also the first time we see Impa so there is like multiple iterations of Impa there's like a similar reincarnation like if it happened in Impa yes and no let us get ahead of yourself, just a little bit. Go ahead. Is it Impa title? Yeah. Okay. There is speculation that Impa is both a name, but also a title uh, of the Sheikah warriors, which is what we find out that Impa is, who are, at this point in time, sworn to be the defenders and guardians of the goddess Hylia. Uh, to her wishes, not necessarily physically. Uh, yes. But Impa is most likely a title, but this specific Impa might just be her name. Yeah. Uh, that being said, this dude shows up. He looks a lot like a certain villain that we'll see around, down the road. This is usually common information for people who, who have played Legend of Zelda. He shows up and he's like, you got big balls, kid, and a big dick. I like that. You get one shot to kill me. Otherwise, I'm taking care of this entire thing. And he goes into this different dimension and waits for Link. Pretty ballsy move, but I, I kind of get it because, you know, he just got sealed. This is the demise who literally just got sealed a couple of minutes ago, if not hour, an hour ago, and literally just killed someone that looked exactly like him. <laughs> so he's like, are you the same dude? <laughs> you sure? Uh, and he's like, all right, fine. You got big balls. I get it. You get one shot. Otherwise, I'm killing you. That being his mistake, as this Link clearly do, do be having really big balls. Uh, uh, he keeps up with Demise really damn well compared to his previous reincarnation. Uh, finding, managing to land a pretty fatal wound uh, in a really awesome scene where he jumps up into the air. He electrifies his sword 
for some reason, never seen before, electrifying his sword. There were moments in times where he can empower his sword, but this man just grabbed the electricity power out of nowhere. Slam dunks his ass right in the chest. Uh, the Mai's being a demon though, does begin to stir. It was a mortal wound, it was a fatal wound, it really was. But he stands up and he's like, all right, fine, you beat me. But I, you, I, you cannot fathom how much I fucking hate all of you. <laughs> and with this pure hatred, I am going to curse onto you the goddess Hylia and your descendants for the rest of your lives before he fades away and, die, fades away and dies. Nuts. So there was already a connection between the goddess Hylia and the spirit of Link, the hero. And he just kind of self-inserted himself and began this weird destiny where every time they incarnate, so does Demise's hatred. Not necessarily in something that looks like Demise, but something that looks like Demise. Uh, but there is always someone who will fight back the pure existence of a Zelda and Link. That's how much malice this man has. Go ahead. Do the people fighting back against that existence usually know that they're fighting back against that No. Existence? This is something that gets completely lost to time. They, like, they, they don't know themselves that they are destined. Usually someone's like, hey, I think you're destined. But they don't know why. Uh, like, eventually the idea of the goddess Hylia also gets lost completely. Uh, this is pretty much the only era where people understand that there used to be a physical goddess living among, well, living amongst the people uh, and that had an actual interaction with her people. Go ahead. So, not to try and power scale all the links, but... There is a strong, there is a strongest link. This link killed yeah. the demon god, or the demon with, king. With pure swordsmanship, yes. The demon king. Yeah. Yeah. Presumably, all or most of the others are just fighting echoes of this guy's dick. <laughs> well, to be fair, even if there's bloodline descendants, and there are, of this specific link, uh, it's, they're always still, even if there's a direct bloodline to it, they're always still just the incarnation of Link the Hero. Specifically that one. Well, yes. No, no, no. That's what I mean. Okay. This is the only link that killed the demon king. Yeah. The other, because you said the, the hatred of his hatred. For yeah. His and all, yeah. The other ones only beat like his the echoes of his hatred. This guy beat the man himself. Is I can I can see that. Or is he just like really strong? He's really strong. He is not the strongest, physically or skill wise. He's pretty strong. He's up there. I'd say like he could beat like he's like 80th percentile. But he is, he is not the strongest physically, and he is not the most skilled. Uh, I see where you're coming from. But some of the echoes are really louder than others sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead. So, this little only one because of lightning, right? Yeah. All right, I thought I needed to go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, kind of going back a little bit, just yeah. about the, the gear, yeah. about time, is it set to a thousand years no matter where the point time it is, or is it linked to a specific time that just so happens to be a thousand years from this point? In this game, it is linked to a specific time. Okay. Because uh, I do need to make that clarification. Okay. In this game, which is the, the one of the two games, one of the three games that has a timeline split, this game, the first fucking one, does technically have a timeline split that actually has no real relevance, but it exists, and uh, it clearly just kind of, it's hard to write time, time travel, but yes, right, it's linked to about, it's always described as freshly sealed. They never say like indicated amount of time, so maybe like an hour after the war that I was mentioned at the beginning of the lecture. All right, so everyone's happy. Big Balls Link kills Big Balls Demise. He's gonna go out and bang Zelda. Uh, but before he leaves the pass, the moment in time where he killed Demise, about like a couple of an hour after his original sealing, 
Fi, his, old, his sword spirit, comes up to him and says, you don't need your sword anymore. Like, yeah, it is your sword, you are its master, and I will, she being the sword itself, I will always recognize you as my master. But this sword is not yours. It's still the goddess's. I think you should leave it here, because there's no reason for you to use it anymore. Your duty is absolutely complete. And then that's when this bitch, oh god, that's when this bitch is like, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I'll protect the sword. Uh, you know, I've been protecting Zelda this entire time. I'll protect the sword as long as it takes. Uh, Zelda clearly always been traveling with her. Gives her this little bracelet as like a way to remember her. Because Zelda really wanted this Impa to come back with her. But she refuses saying that her duty is always to the goddess. And while she is technically the goddess, her orders are from an incarnation of her that no longer exists. And unfortunately, she can't, she can't go. And also, like, time, time travel stuff. So Link places down the Master Sword inside this area, pretty close to the... And that introduces the time loop that has been going on this entire fucking game. The completed Master Sword and the Goddess Sword exist at the exact same time. All of history. Since Link grabbed, since the goddess was sent up, and then this Link, the, the chosen hero Link, grabbed the goddess sword and turned it into the master sword. Then a thousand years in the past, placed the master sword down, and then they they go back into their time, and then there's a reveal that the master sword is still there, and Impulse is there. That's actually the reveal of these two these two characters are the same character. Because uh, she's like, I told you I would guard it, and then he goes, Wink. So it's like, you're telling me that all of this already happened and all, none of this actually mattered because the Master Sword was already behind you you just didn't open the door. Fucking <laughs> 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 It's such a weird time loop because it's, less, it's a linear time loop. But that weird time loop is self-sustained. Uh, the moment you start to play Skyward Sword, like, and that's the creation of a new universe, I guess, or whatever that way, you're always stuck in that loop. It's kind of like a dark soul. Like, if you give up, you became the hollow, literally, and figuratively. Dark soul, or whatever. So that is the end of Skyward Sword. <laughs> in a brief amount of time, ish. Where the Triforce that Link wished upon is still on top of the statue of Ida, where that's a really low res image. Where Link and Zelda do canonically then. Uh, and this is what we got to we get into the real fucking cool shit. Let's fuck the game, the game is fucking boring. This is where we get to the cool shit. The shit, the fucking literal like thousands of year history before we did get to the next game. So, once the highlands are turned down to the surface, they begin to repopulate. Like their entire like, structure that they had to settle for a thousand years is coming down. There's no point to be up there. They begin to settle, and they're going to settle all around the, the statue of the goddess Aya. Bruce, kind of always being a, he has a light rank. Like he helps them, but he's a pretty like him. He doesn't want to, especially because want to be ordered around by him. He's like, we're cool. Well, not that cool. And he separates himself. And he most likely heads into the Ganeru Desert. Where he, the he himself discovers the existence of the time shift stones. How is it? Uh, okay. Uh, but he most likely discovers the existence of the time shift stones and probably establishes some pretty good trade with what would eventually become known as the Kingdom of Hyrule. But at the time, just Link and Zelda doing some Link and Zelda shit and banging and having babies. Uh, is Bruce the predecessor to the Gudo? That's what I'm getting at. <laughs> Motherfucker! Okay. Uh, these time shift stones are also the reason that he's able to live in the desert. So whenever he's a thousand years before the desert, uh, indicates that it was actually very lush and fertile land. So having those activated active zones meant that they have these pockets of oasis in the desert and they're able to survive on it. They have fresh water, they have some like 
areas that they can plant uh, food, they can have fucking cows, you know, they can have a pretty good time in the desert. As long as those plants don't last, okay, they don't last forever. We'll get there. Uh, this is also most likely where the Hylians, the receiving trade of the French results and all this, and them actual resources to live. Further down the line, use these stones to create the Ocarina of Time, the Gate of Time, the renewed Temple of Time. Well, we'll get to all these terms later, as well as a lot of the time stones, not the time shift stones, that they help to switch time. Um, that is a big interaction. Just with Bruce being who he is, set into motion, a oh, shit ton of history. Like I said, I really wanted to point it out. Bruce does not hate people. He's a little bit xenophobic. <laughs> but he doesn't, but like, he doesn't like change. It's not that he hates people. It's that he doesn't like change. He's not resistant to change, but he really doesn't like it. He likes things to be the way he is. Like, the way things are in his point of view. He's a big burly man, so if he's going to go to the desert, and attempt to name it Bruce Land, which doesn't work out, by the way. Uh, there is actually a dragonfly in Skyward Sword called the Gerudo Dragonfly, which someone most likely decided Bruce Land's a horrible name. Let's name it after, like, this dragonfly is literally everywhere. It's the Gerudo Land. Uh, once I get it again. Right. Bruce being a big burly man probably wants his people to be built as fuck. Well. Bruce being a bit of a patriarch <laughs> probably only wants him and his descendants to be the rulers of Bruce land. Uh, so he most likely establishes a set of rules that essentially makes his people more militaristic in nature, but also that only the males should rule. <laughs> but that's the type of thing Bruce would do, unfortunately. Your hero. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that was uh, So that is some of the like brief afterthoughts that happen at the end of the Sky Era, and now we go out again. Oh boy, was there a lot of shit that happened? This is the fire of the sky. Okay. So, you have a Real quick, before yeah. you leave this whole thing. Yeah. Is there an explanation as to why at one point it becomes a matriarchy slash males are very rare? As just, you know, it's um, it, 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 it happens. Yeah, it is a thing that happens. There's no true explanation. The only way you can explain it is that they're gurus and the people who decided to go with gurus <laughs> Had a genetic disposition to give birth to females. <laughs> so, is there like a specific Guru's Y chromosome or something? Can we exist within the Guru's that that's what determines them? Guru's has some pretty strong genes. Kids are in there. Really? Really? Got out there. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Guru's is really strong. Yeah, Guru's is the only link and the most obvious link. Or the predecessor of the Guru in the future. <laughs> Alright, so after the era of the sky, era of the sky, we enter what's called, probably referred to as the era of chaos. You see those fucking golden triangles? They didn't try to hide those golden triangles. <laughs> they were like, well, what are you going to do? We got Big Balls Link over here. And the Link's already fucking 70 years old. <laughs> But it's ball and you know, it's like, I ain't gonna beat you forever, boy. <laughs> uh, as as the bloodline continues to diffuse and the land begins to get populated, a lot of people really want to have that wish granting power. And that turns into a lot of little wars for the control over the tribals. That's what's known as here chaos. Yeah, that is known as the era of chaos, and, and, and one of the most important, yeah. Is this where the dynasty warriors came? Uh, <laughs> the warrior game, but not canon. No, they're not. Okay, they're well, 
the Hyrule Warrior's name is not Canon. Okay. Age of Calamity is Canon. I thought that was that's the second one. That's another Hyrule Warrior's name, but it was a lot. It was overseen by the Zelda team. Oh, it's not. It's not a sequel. It's a separate thing. The Age of Calamity. The, the second game is Canon. They're both Canon. That's always that's a little bit of a wild thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, getting to the Air of Chaos, there is one major event that happens during the Era of Chaos, so maybe, well, not immediately, a couple hundred years after the Era of Era of the Sky, and what became known as the Interlocal War. Eventually, these people who were really good at that magic found a way to. The titles were never did. Never. They just they were, Like, the way you see them, that's the way they were. But they found a way to enter that ethereal plane, the silent realm, especially what became known as the sacred realm, and take the Triforce from the inside there, as the Triforce exists, kind of a good multiple into existence. You could put it in one or the other, or at all times, kind of like, you could physically put it in one or the other, but it exists in both at the same time. It's a divine relic. It, it, it just is. So they found a way to tap into that power without the need of the Master Sword, or without the need to be a reincarnation of the uh, chosen, chosen hero, or a peak hero, or an incarnation of God's idea, to tap into the sacred realm. And oh boy, the goddesses did not like that. And this is when they send in their light spirits, or their dragons, as or something different, which was uh, Baron, Elden, and and sealed all of the power that these individuals had into artifacts that would eventually become known as the East And then sent these motherfuckers into a different realm of existence as imprisonment from ever attempting to mess with the creation of the office of heaven. And also went away to teach a lesson. And they were sent inside a mirror that eventually became known as the mirror of heaven. That was the era of chaos, and after that happened, I will enter a brief period of prosperity, a brief one, where King Gustav I, a direct bloodline descendant of both the chosen hero link of Skyward Sword and of Zelda of Skyward Sword, established himself as the first king of Hyrule, maybe 5,000 years before the events of Ocarina of Time happened. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And this began the Force Era, which by far is the longest era of the Zelda timeline that exists, period. Uh, from the beginning of the Force Era, with the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule officially, to the end of the Force Era, which ends at the Ocarina of Time, You see races evolve into other things. And yeah, there, this is the longest era of Hyrule, period. Not including Breath of the Wild, but that's more like Nintendo acts. But, so, Hyrule is already been established. Hyrule gets established at the end of the era of chaos. Oh, I forgot to mention. At the end of the era of chaos, uh, there was a sage known as Rauru who also was like, we never want that shit to happen again. So the Master Sword is still being placed in the pedestal, and he also knowing how to tamper with the Sacred Realm, never attempting to take the Triforce for himself, sealed the Triforce within the Sacred Realm, placing, like swapping it from that reality, this our reality, inside that ethereal reality, and then placing a rock on that reality into the pedestal, that houses the Master Sword that has been placed in the link that has been placed out like 5,000 years ago. Where's that going? I don't know where the word comes from. I don't know what's going on. So, yeah. I think, I think where my guys are really alive, and maybe I'm mis- misremembering it. Yeah. Um, only part of Skylar fell when they beat uh, When he made the wish, only part of Skylar fell. Once the Mize was destroyed, Magics of uh, the Goddess Hydea kind of faded a bit, but not everything gone. No. Okay, so there is a new world. Okay, there are still there is no still a lot of city. Yep. 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 But 
talking about with Link, Bang, and Zelda. Yep. Um, were they up or down? They were down. They were down. Yeah, they just they chose to stay in the service. Others came down the side from the neighborhood and grew all of them. All of them? All of them? Okay. okay. I'm making sure that I'm following. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, Skyward Sword's to start things off is the worst one to start things off. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one in the series. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so within the force out of there is uh, the longest out of there is a resurgence of the demon tribe. One hundred years after the establishment of the Kingdom of Hyrule by King Gustav the First, uh, we get what is known as the hero of man. Link. An incarnation of Link the Hero. Not to be confused with Link the Hero or Link the Chosen Hero. The hero of man uh, gets bestowed by other creations that we didn't know about. <laughs> Called the Kapori. Who are they're not fairies, but they're these incredibly small beings who also contain a light power that is not related to the light power found around the tribe. Let's go ahead. Sometimes they are and sometimes they aren't. This one is not. Because the royal family currently houses an blood from the Skyward Zone. So most of the royal family is carrying his direct bloodline. Uh, the spirit of the hero doesn't always reincarnate into the royal family. In fact, it's only done it. And actually, no, it's never done. It was teased that it could have been, but no, that was King of Uh the, the spirit of Link the hero has never truthfully reincarnated into the bloodline except for the one specific one. That right. So the second resurgence of the demon tribe. Fucking shit up. But the Cody show up was like, we got a cool sword, we got this cool line, you don't have to use the triforce, it's cool, it's our stuff. And so he does, and he keeps the shit out of the demons. That's the legend of the hero man. And that leads us into Legend of the Bitch Cat, which, while it's a fan favorite game, actually has little relevance to the time plan. Go ahead. <laughs> So I noticed that the illustration for the hero of man, yep. the sword looks very similar to the master sword. It does. It is not the master sword. Not at all. It's the Kokori sword. And I would assume they only designed it like that because they know of the existence of the master of the actual master sword. Yes. Probably. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. They probably it's entirely possible they designed it because they know the existence of the master sword, but it is not the master sword. It uses a power completely different from uh, the golden light power that the Tide Force can get on, or the Masters of can get on. Got it. Uh, yeah. Which this also attributes to why this era is called the Force era. Because this introduces the light force created by the Kokori, but it also introduces the idea that the Tide Force emanates its own mystical golden force that are unrelated to each other. I'm fucking nuts, man. I know. The finish guy, fan favorite. Not really relevant to the timeline all too much, unfortunately. So 100 years after that second resurgence of the Demon Tribe, the finish cap takes place, where we find <laughs> a Link and a Zelda that actually know, know each other pretty well. Uh, they're celebrating the 100 years since the Kori came down and helped uh, the Highlands defeat the second, the second resurgence of the Demon Tribe. Uh, and Link is just showing up, he's going to have a good old time out of festival in a century. Uh, and then this fucking dude named Vani shows up, and his backstory is that he himself is also a Kokori. But he's always been in a in, It's almost like the darkness that lies in the hearts of men. So, he's the apprentice of... Oops, I guess I, I, I had a slide, but... He's the apprentice of a other Kokori. Yeah, Ezra. He's a brother of a 
that you say old employee named Desmo, who usually creates a lot of artifacts for the islands just for, you know, it was pretty cool. And he created this hat that grants wishes. Wow. Probably sold it, he's wearing it right there. And he shows up thinking that getting back to the Kokoro Silver, which is currently holding the seal for a bunch of demons, zero man that completely conquered. Hold more secrets than to become something. Is the power of this man's wish granting act in any way comparable to the power of the Triforce's wish granting? It really is. That's impressive. It's, he just he, made it? Yeah, he just fucking made it on a whim. Luckily, that I also got lost in time. <laughs> There's no mention of an artifact that powerful ever again. Not even in the Ministry of Star a trilogy of games, uh, well, Force Owners and Force of Adventure, even then his hat is never mentioned again. Uh, they're just like, oh shit, that's too strong. And they might have destroyed it, they might have not, but it's never mentioned anywhere else again. But it is comparable. By the end of the game, uh, Paul even steals Zelda, fucking fucks the king, and you're right out of the ass. And Link goes and collects the four different elements to power up this Kikori sword, which turns it into its true form, a very similar tale to that of Skyward Sword, the Four Sword, which houses the four elements of Earth, Wind, Fire, and Water. Uses that people share of this guy, or, you know, turning his. Actually, you know, they're a lot more friendly. I don't know, I couldn't see the fucking guys, but, uh, we're hurting Zelda, we're hurting his kingdom. He kicked the shit out of him and seals the force sword back. It was not really his. It was a purported artifact and it really belonged to the hero of that anyways. So he puts the, the force sword back into the pedestal. That's kind of the end of body for a couple hundred years until seal breaks for no fucking reason except that he's forgotten that he was a people. He's completely corrupted by his own heart and he's mostly just that demon thing. And he's known as the Wind Mage. Which he only did have uh, the past in the era. Exceptional capacity for channeling the wind uh, for that. Uh, but he's completely forgotten his story. The same thing happens. An unknown wind not only kills up uh, after seeing that his uh, Zelda's and a bunch of other natives are getting kidnapped, shows up, pulls up the force of work, keeps the shit out of this dude, and gets sword back. That's as much relevance to the timeline as it has. Power through the beginning. And here comes easily the largest part, longest part of the legend. Everything that happened before the wandering of time. <laughs> All the internal politics that led up just to an event before the beginning of Ocarina of Time, which sets the stage for everything that happens after Ocarina of Time. And oh boy, the history of Hyrule is not necessarily just the history of the Hyrule that we've just been talking about. It's the history of all the tribes. So I'm going to talk about all the tribes as quickly as possible, establishing their importance and leading up to what is known as the Hyrulean Civil War, which led to the events of Ocarina Times and established the preceding events for the rest of the uh, that was the proceeding, that's really the proceeding uh, timeline. Do you need me to stop? No, 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 no. So, let's talk about people theory first. During Skyward Sword, we're going to go all the way back. There is, during in the forest province, there is this really huge ass fucking tree. It's just a big ass fucking tree. But it's entirely possible that that was the first predecessor and, uh, like, kind of predecessor of what became known as a great legacy tree which was this divine being who had access to a lot of knowledge considering he was really old. The chances that the great Deku tree was most likely born before the Venice Capital, uh, as of Spellman, which is already at least a couple, almost 10,000 years before our period of time that. Now, um, a lot, a lot. Yeah. These people in the uh, pants are going to have a great Deku tree. Are they high, uh, not high rulings? They're high rulings. High rulings. They're high rulings. They are high They are in the high rulings. So during the urbanization of high rule, under the rule of King Gustav I, uh, there's a 
what the borons supply up all the minerals, all the gold, all the precious that the metals. There's a little more favoritism towards the Goron than there is to the Zora. They don't like that, and they do eventually have some uh, uncivil disputes across Tyro uh, that is the predecessor to the Hyrule Zora. So, speaking of, that's the Zora. The Zora is, how I would speak, not as much as the fucking Gorons, who have been around since the era of the Gods Hydea. They are always known by their tattoo of the Goron Ruby, which even the original even the original Gorons during the countless uh, era of the goddess had the Goron Ruby tattoo. But are the Gorons tattoo? No, absolutely. See that fucking man? They'll try to you into the base. <laughs> They'll try to you into the base. <laughs> <laughs> This are really many good good men. Well, they are big boys. They're fucking heavy. <laughs> they are one. Of, they are a feat of strength for one of the links. Good. That is one hell of a beer belly on that. <laughs> That's all muscle, man. <laughs> that, that dude comes at you. Comes up walking out of the fucking trailer like, what the hell are you doing on my property? <laughs> so even during the era of the Skyward, even during the era that the Skyward sort of took place, the era of the sky, they were already kind of known for digging and for mining and for excavating. They were archaeologists. They're really smart. Like you know, don't let those in the mirror again, like the better you. But at least at the time, they were a very smart race. Uh, near the end of the Skyward, so always were racist it comes like. <laughs> I mentioned a race called the Magmas, which are a more like race. They inhabited the volcano province of the Skyward Sword era. A volcano that would eventually become known as Death Mountain. These Magmas lived there. Let me tell you, there's no more Magmas in the land of Zola. <laughs> there is most the chance that the Gora completely wiped out the Magmas to take their home. They were already showing interest in that volcano province at the end of Skyward Sword. The chance is that they just killed all the Magmas, or at the very least exiled all of them away from anywhere nearby Hyrule, is highly likely. But if they were looking for a new home, where did the Gorons originally came from? The Gorons were originally from a mountain called the volcano called Mount Cornell. But they were extended, and they were they were the they were some of the original humans from the land of Hydra. Like they, they were some of the creation from the creation from the land from the Hydra. From, they aren't a direct creation of the goddess Hydra, but they themselves also saw themselves as children of Hydra. Like all of them, did. except that Hydra had faith. Uh, David, I can't remember. Understandable, but they did live in another mountain, uh, Mount Cornell. It wasn't working out. But they were too far away from Hyrule. Uh, they were too far away from Hyrule. They wanted to be closer to their ancestral home. And so they fucking took over that volcano. You know, they were really good at mining anyways. And within time, they mined out that health of volcano and eventually found it became known as Korok City, which is just uh, an intricate layer of, or not intricate layer, intricate set of tunnels and large open spaces inside of the volcano that eventually came on the step uh, where they unfortunately encountered the dragon, uh, Bovedia, who, you know, as a dragon to eat rocks, eat the rock people, <laughs> and it wasn't a door. Before we continue on the hey, these, are, these are door runs? Door runs. Okay, so when you said earlier, Bruce, the guy behind the Get Bruce. Bruce. I was picturing these guys. Oh, uh, <laughs> I am goddamn Bruce. <laughs> the big boy fucked <laughs> <up> some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Every part of my body was picturing these guys. I, I don't know who the Garuda are. Let's see. This is all sexy women. 
Oh, you'll see, you'll see. I'm going to change the music by the time I get on the new one. This unnamed moron created a fucking big ass hammer it's called the Megaton Hammer and said, hey, fuck this dragon, he's killing us, I don't want doing shit for us, I'm doing things into my own hands. Yeah, fuck that one for protection. He fucking beat the shit. It's described as he hit him with the hammer, he hit Moegia with the hammer until he could no longer eat. <laughs> that, you know, so a child here. He smashed that bitch's goal. Uh, and that boy eventually, you know, kept fucking his drugs fuck, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> eventually gave birth to the leader of the war on the around that time called the Rubia. Which is actually easy, and I think it's called Rubia. That's the guy's kind of name, Link. No, like, this guy? Yeah, the small one? Yeah, his name's Link. Who gave birth? Uh, so the guy that founded the, the, I'll get into what his name is, but the guy that founded the, he is the ancestor of the guy who founded the Dragon that Eagle was. And this is his son, his name is Link. <laughs> what, he, uh... <laughs> well, I why you're there, Link, after Okay, so, Link is the tiny one. The tiny one, that's Link. Okay. okay. I've got, it's because you no, know, yeah. for my first guy, yeah, this guy's called the Rubia. Okay, yeah, from my perspective, you're one of the big ones. That's why I was like, my god. Why is this next man so big? Uh, because uh, you need big hands to sweep big hammer, and he inherited those hands. I don't understand. He was very That's what he made. Yeah, 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 that's what he made. I just want to say that Link looks a bit cute. Huh? I just want to say that Link looks a bit cute. What's that mean? He looks very cute. Oh, yeah. Link is very, very cute. He's a good boy. He's a very good boy. He's a handsome little man. He's a good boy. Oh, actually, no. Uh, before we stop in, last, uh, last time we have to talk about before we get back into this room. The Sheikah Tribe. So the Sheikah Tribe, just like the Kiri, are also Hydeans. It's just that a couple of them were a lot better at magic than other magic were. Magic has always had a hand wave, a legend of Zolo, or something, something that some people can do and something can do. They were really good at it. And during the time of the era of the Zoraida, she sent messages out to these people, like, hey, do what I say, please. And so I did. <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, and this became the bloodline descendants of the people that were as Impa in the Sparrow era. And eventually that shifted to we are the protectors and guardians of the goddess Hylia to we are the protectors and guardians of the royal family, which still technically carries the bloodline of the goddess Hylia. But that role definitely shifted. And. For now. I just need to get that out of the way before. Uh, the fucking Gerudo tribe. The fucking... Oh shit, she got back. The fucking Gerudo tribe.
the Hyrule Kingdom became a very reactive kingdom ever since it started, started to constantly get plagued by people trying to take the Triforce and get rid of chaos, and then eventually to people trying to, or the demon tribe, reinvade uh, their forces, and eventually this fucking wind mage taking over. And there's always been this weird back and forth with the kingdom of Hyrule, and they always have to react. The ruler tribe on the other side, who's isolated himself from the Gonzalo and the English Campus he really didn't want anything to do with them. Like, he was cool with them, he established straight with them, of course, why with them? He didn't really want to be around for them. And a lot of what Bruce learned from Inpa and Chica, as well as what he generally believed in, got passed down in terms of culture. And along the course of that, they began to worship the sand as a well, and eventually establishing a goddess of sand, which may be a nod to the goddess then, may not be. No confirmation there. She doesn't even have a name. It's just the goddess of sand. And they built a temple, which would eventually become known as the spirit temple. Uh, within the desert. And like I mentioned before, they survived in the desert not necessarily by trade, they just trading goods, uh, like to plant into their fertile land. They survived in the desert with the assistance of time shifting stones. Those time shifting stones did eventually run out with the ability to connect back to 1000 years prior. Or to not to 1000 years prior, to the point in time that the goddess idea sent uh, the land up to the sky. Eventually, the time between that uh, point and where they were began to fade to the point where the stone began to fade completely, and they were left in the fucking desert with no real way of surviving. It was around the site they most likely abandoned their goddess and their spirit temple and moved closer to the heavenly border. At this point, already established its kingdom by the where the Zora River passed by, just for, just for the sake of having um, drinkable water. It was also around this time that they shifted their priorities into the necessity to steal. They were a bit of an oppressed tribe. Granted, uh, they chose to live in the desert about uh, fucking 10,000 years ago or whatever. But they weren't ever let back into the kingdom of Hyrule. They were never able to have access to like the fertile land that they had, or to the uh, or to more fresh water that would just pass by. Uh, let's see where am I? Uh, Bruce, 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 yes. Uh, okay, the Bruce, 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 man. Okay. Eventually, close to, yeah. I don't know why I'm going to ask this question. Not misleading, but just because it's probably a little bit of a strong question. Um, so, just due to the fact that they live in the desert and they're away that they sound like I looked at, is there some kind of automatic reading? They don't have to put all of them. Possibly there was some prejudices in which getting the probably the more wizard brow. You know what? You know what? I'm sure. Uh, the Japanese developers maybe did that on purpose. As far as the lore of Legend of Zelda, I have a few. Uh, as far as the lore of Legend of Zelda is concerned, they always depict the Naruto, a psychic animal, as a tribe that always needed to survive. And they stole to survive. They didn't steal. They stole from like they, they treated them as Robin Hoods, specifically one specific group of them. Uh, they stole from the rich to provide for themselves. They could not have male men, like they, they were near damn incapable of giving birth to male men except every 100 years, where somewhere along the line, most likely Bruce, he said a male always has to rule. So whenever there was a male born, they were treated as the king. Once the king is gone, a matriarch takes over. But once a male is born again, the patriarch takes over. It's a constant cycle. It's about every 100 years. Uh, along this time, oh, what did I say? Oh, yeah. Along this time, two specific twins were born, maybe 500 years before the event of the time, called Ome and Kotake. They were really fucking good at magic. Really, really good at magic. And 
they just decided on themselves to become the whole matriarchs of the Guru, no matter if there was a male born into the Guru or not. They would essentially just groom the male into ruling the way that they like to they would like the Guru to rule the best. Uh, yes. But within the races of Hyrule, they became known as prostitutes because they would only have sex with Hyrules to breed, because otherwise would die out. We're incapable of having men, uh, or having uh, only one man every 100 years as a child. And they would steal. So they were known as thieves, and they were known as prostitutes. So every tribe, except the Sheikah. The Sheikah and the Gerudo, and there's a lot of architectural proof, almost a lot of games, where they should, there's a lot of crossing of emblems, or emblems of the Gerudo inside, holy temples of the Shika, or uh, emblems of the Shika inside all the temples of the Gerudo, that kind of giving us back into the era of Skyward Sword, Bruce always adored the Shika. Because Impa kind of became a mother figure for him at the time that he existed in the So 500 years before the twins were born, and we get to roughly 50 years before the events of Aquina time. Maybe like 40 years. Where our boy, Ganondorf, Dragmire is born. <laughs> Had such a strong, un unknown to him, was the first incarnation of the Mind He had such a strong aptitude for magic, he had such a strong aptitude for combat, he had a strong aptitude for, well, he was just generally really got him really intelligent, really hot. Uh, <laughs> that Kotaki Kohome, that was the first person they acknowledged as a true king of the Guru. And Ganador, uh, Ganador was a pretty smart guy. Here he was. Uh, he saw that their alliance with the King of Hyrule or the Kingdom of Hyrule was an absolute sham. They're literally being oppressed and they're not allowed to extend to Port land. But Kotaki Kohome advised, uh, when he was young, strongly advised against interfering with one, the clash between the Gorons and the Zoro, as that would result in the Kino of Hyrule sending the Hyrule Knights in. The moment we start, they start. And that's not going to be good for us. But yeah, we're strong, but also have the Knights, man. They're kind of fucked. They got their juice in or something. And Ganondorf listened to that as a kid, but the older he got, the more he saw that the war between the Zora and the Gorons for land and favoritism over the Kingdom of Hyrule was getting out of hand. And that eventually uh, got completely out of hand when a specific Shika, two Shika warriors, began to have a discussion. There was the Shika wizard Bongo Bongo <laughs> and the great Shika warriors, uh, Impa, who were great warriors in their own right for different reasons. One was a very strong wizard and one was stupidly strong. Uh, of course, I will never interfere with uh, Joy. Is it the same Bongo Bongo as the one of the champion, the, the, the boss of the Temple of the Shadows? Yeah, the one of the Shadows. Same one. That's good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bongo Bongo was the one that the Shika warriors would never interfere with the war between Gorons and Zora. Because they just wanted fresh water and they wanted minerals. Bongo Bongo thought that was bullshit. Like, we are, they were stuck as they lived in an area very close to the Gorons in Kaguri village. They were stuck in the middle of the war. The Gerudo lived very close to the Zora River. They were also stuck in the middle of the war. They were constantly living in a crossfire. Bongo Bongo had had enough. He snapped, he said, fuck this, and took a couple of the warriors and uh, began to fight back against the Gorons and the Zora just for being able to sustain their own village. It was like this deciding moment that the Gerudo decided to launch an invasion the Ganondorf at the head, uh, sending in a shit ton of iron knuckles where they made their way to Kakuriko and there they made an alliance with the Shika. The Gerudo Shika alliance is something that's always existed in a way, but this is the first time they had officially met again since <coughs> uh, Imba and uh, Gurus first talked in Skyward Sword. 
Evil isn't going to take no fucking rubble stone as part of the Shiga. And uh, one second rule actually set their full forces in. The Hydeans obviously responded, and that was the beginning of the Hydeans Civil War. The only thing we know for sure is that once the Hydeans came in, Zoras and the Gorok quit their shit. <laughs> they joined the Hydeans Alliance, and the Sheikah rebels, as well as the Gerudo, fought in an absolutely brutal war. It's like, it's described as the worst thing that's happened to the invasion of the demons. Uh, the first time, not even the second time, not the second time, the second time was full of pussies. Uh, they didn't even need to try it for us for that. Uh, this is the bloodiest war in the history of the world, the Hyrulean Civil War. And the Zoros and the Gorons put their head, they joined the Hyrulean Knights, or the Hyrule Lions, and they defeated the Gerudos, and they defeated the Sheikah Rebels. Though the Sheikah Rebels actually internally lost their leader when Impa. I should explain that she was also playing with these fucking ninjas. Uh, Impa captured Bongo Bongo and decapitated him and removed the from his arms and sent his body down there uh, in Kaku Village. Uh, it's just a way of showing your dogs that this is what happens when you rebel against the royal, the royal family. Uh, and with the tale of a Hyman woman who carrying her child to the Kokiri Forest uh, begged the Deku for the Deku tree to please take the child as his father had just recently died in the war. Do we get the beginning events of the Ocarina of Ocarina of Time with the most tragic thing to ever exist in every single time I the hero of time? He's he's a his life fucking sucks. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Nine year old born into, well, him thinking he was born into, as a Kokiri, he was never told he was a high end. Uh, he's had dreams of Ganondorf coming in and wrecking shit. Not only Ganondorf. Uh, Ganondorf already at the loss of uh, Hyrulean Civil War. was already put out. He, he feigned submission. Uh, Hyrule won and expanded their territory. The only thing that they did not say they properly owned was Zora Domain and Deadlands and the technically the river. Uh, everything else they said, no, actually now this is ours. The river leading to Zoro Domain, that's ours now. Uh, the road leading up to Goron Village, that's also ours now. This is y'all, y'all fucked up. But we won, because of us. Uh, and Ganon was like, I hate this, but I'm going to start scheming a plan. And I just have to pretend for a couple of years to be their, their puppet, and I'm gonna get back at them, because he had through the Sheikahs, or at least through Bongo Bongo, learn about the Dragos. So he began to hatch a scheme that eventually led into him finding out that he needed the three, three gems that locked the Dragos beneath, uh, behind the Temple of Time, which is given up the big Dragon Tree, Lord Jabu Jabu, technically, and uh, the Ruin, which was the Goron. The Goron, Soros, and the Great Dragon Tree held the power to open up uh, this game. He had been playing a pretty good boy. Ganon was pretending to be, well, Ganon was pretending to be subservient to the king of Hyrule. And he was like, hey, can I please have the stones, please? And they all said no to him. He got really pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, cursed the great deco tree, essentially killed him uh, moments after he managed to talk to him. Uh, he infected Lord Jabba with the parasite. And he sealed off the food supply for the Gorons. <laughs> Just in theory, he's like, alright, fuck y'all. You're not gonna give me your shit, and I hope you all die. And he just kind of passively kills him. Oh, sorry, not passively kills him. Passively hopes that he kills by ruining their lives. Let me tell you why this man's life sucks. Nine years old. He was a mother. Uh, he has been lied to his entire life that he's with Yuri, yet he has never received a fairy. It's a very common thing that could be from the Great Dragon Tree, considering that he is most likely also the progenitor of all fairies, but he's also the father of all the fairies. Go ahead. You said that he's not a fairy? Yeah. Link was born, or oh, what? We did, those, these are the, the little heavy boys that we did say are hiding. They are hiding, right? But they're but they are, they are gonna move. But, they are but, it, but it's still, it's not like he's not of the same race. Correct. They and look like him. Because he is, but he's not yeah, one of them. Yeah, but they are, at this point in time, not age, 
past like 19 years old. That was because of the, the decade. Yeah. So he's already 9 or 10 years old. He's slowly starting to get a little bit get it, get it. Throw some hair on the balls, man. <laughs> well, I think you already mentioned this, but yeah. really, I love it. But, uh, are these Kokiri related to the people like that Kokiris? Uh, uh, yeah, Kikwis. Uh, yeah, Kikwis. No. Because we have confirmation that the Kokiri were in fact Italians, and the Kikwis were like the three penguins in life, uh, that they have no relation. We have no idea what happened with Kikwis. It's entirely possible that in, <laughs> in Hyrulean expansion, they also want to extend. I think you. Um, like why do they, they wear green? Like is, 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 oh. is there like a lore for a reason why yeah. it's just kind of like not a strategy? Well, they wear green because it matches the symbol of nature. Camouflage. Essentially, yeah. It, it, it kind of is. It really is camouflage. They are a very secluded culture. Uh, they don't like people coming in and out. Uh, the great deputy made an exception for him because he saw a great potential in him for a coming evil. Uh, they wear green because it kind of symbolizes that they live with among you. Uh, that's, that's the entire reason for why that's supposed to make art. It's called the fairy color. Yeah. It does, it's supposed to look different than like, the original name stuff. Okay, technically, you look at it, it's like, oh, that doesn't look similar at all. It's like the Chinese chief not about that. <laughs> uh, because once he's actually donning the proper garb, it's supposed to look different. But no, yeah. Otherwise, they're just wearing the green cap and the green uh, stuff to blend in the thing. Um, so he lives. Up, he grows up thinking he's okay, but he's actually not. Everyone thinks he's weird because he doesn't have a fairy. He's bullied there. He has exactly one friend, Saria. Uh, a picture of Saria. Oh, sorry. A picture of Saria. Uh, Saria. Good old Kiri. They're friends. Uh, and one snake. Like finds out about his destiny and receives one of the emeralds from the great deputy. Uh, skipping over Zarya. Link and Zarya, they're the only friends they have. So they're. What? That must work here. Not worth it? Azuo? Not the Azuo! So, Zarya, Link. Link. Saria is the only person that Link has. Uh, Saria sees a really good friendship with Link. Uh, whenever Link was sad, she would play a song for him. If you don't want Saria song. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much the most important part. Saria would play songs for Link whenever he was feeling sad, which is very often. Uh, and when Link finally received a fairy, she kind of already knew that this probably meant that Link was going to be. She always had a suspicion that Link was not really a computer. She didn't care, it doesn't really matter to her. She just knew that she really liked having this friend around. Um, so once you like, talk to the great Deku Tree, receives a, the emerald to begin his quest to go find the princess of the mother, yo, shit's about to go down. Uh, Link is getting ready to depart, and so Saria gives her the ocarina that she used to play songs for him whenever he was feeling sad. He should play the song that made him happy, which is her song. Uh, and with that, like, we party goodbye. Link goes and ends up in Castle Town, quickly finds out that, oh, he's a Hylian, but he also doesn't fit in in Hylian culture. He's just raised as a Kokiri. So he's already starting to feel a lot like an outcast. And now he only has the presence of a nagging fairy, according to the, uh, to the, uh, the fan base. Uh, it was given to him by the great deputy to be a guy. Uh, that's the only person he talks to, really. This fairy is rolling around and telling him to go find Princess of the Just general companionship throughout his coming adventure. Uh, where he comes across, eventually in for some reason, and he comes across Princess of the where he meets the... Uh, he meets the Princess of the and so he tells him, yo, shit's going fuck, the tree told me. Like, oh shit, no, yeah, I dreamed about that. Hey, look at this dude. And then you see the, the perfect guy in Lord me, where he's a, uh, ah, I swear loyalty to you. It's like, 
and sees the children. But he doesn't really think anything of them at that time. And I think he's asked to go to the Zora, to go to the Zora and help them out. Uh, not the boys able to teach us him uh, a secret royal family song, which is known as Elder Lullaby. Using those two songs and his surprising powers with Alcarina thanks to Saria, he is able to befriend the Gorons and become a sworn brother with the Runia, which glossing over the fact that he saved their entire race by uh, opening their uh, supply of food again uh, is the reason that that Goron uh, had a child named Lin. Uh, they are sworn brothers, and it's probably the first friend he made after Saria. Excluding the fairy, who was like was mostly providing companionship more than friendship. Uh, after that, he finds his way into the Zora domain, meets the King Zora, and says, Yo, can I have the sapphire? And he's like, No, my child is missing. And he's like, I'll find your child, I guess. And he discovers that Princess Udo, which is the princess of the Zoras, got eaten by Lord Jabu Jabu for some reason. That's because of the parasite that Andor had infected them with. Oh god. That was right time. Oh god. Lord Jabu Jabu eats Princess Rudo. Link finds out that she is eaten by Princess Rudo by a message in the bottle that she sent out. He finds a way to get eaten by Lord Jabu Jabu. And during that entire exploration of the giant as fish, Princess Rudo develops a crush on Link, finding him very handsome. He kills the parasite, which is Benito Dabu Dabu, and Princess Rudo bestows upon him the sapphire, which was also treated as an engagement ring, because she just found Link so hot. But he's still 10, right? He's 9 years old. <laughs> he's 9 years old. He's 9 years old. Or half of years old. Well, he's 9 years old the entire game, mentally, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the way I would like describe the relationship between Princess Rudo and this link is something like Chi Chi and Goku. Right. Where like Chi Chi fell in love with Goku in that moment in time, like fell in love with Goku and the children. Uh, and like those feelings never went past the crush, but the crush just persisted for a really goddamn long time. <laughs> uh, that, that's the relationship that Princess Rudo and they have, essentially. At least at this moment in time. So he goes back. What? Does he ever get pussy? Anyways. <laughs> he could have. He absolutely could have. <laughs> so he delivers the three stones, good. You hear that's good. <laughs> Is that why they evolve into birds? <laughs> no. <laughs> he okay. didn't have any pussy. Thank you, Professor. He <laughs> doesn't fly. Why do you think he evolved? He evolved before he had pussy. Oh. 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 He, he, uh, is going back to meet the Princess Elder. He's like, yo, I got all three stones. But unfortunately, Ganondorf has been keeping a very close eye on this little square. Who has, like, since the moment he got into Kiri Emerald, Ganondorf was completely aware that I think this kid's about to do all my work for me. So, the moment that Link got all three of the crystals or the minerals, he staged a coup, killing the King of Hyrule, a lot of his royal guard, and a good amount of destruction of, uh, of uh, Castle Town. Go ahead. I guess this is really good to do, right? Yeah, but is that royal family still the, the bloodline of OG? Uh, yes. Okay. OG Link? Yeah. Okay. Uh, OG Link and the Chosen Hero. Uh, Link the Chosen Hero. Yes. I have one picture. Yeah. Yeah, it is still the OG bloodline. Go ahead. I just want to see if Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, he, like, the motivation is there, and the only issue is that he is calm and collected now. Uh, like, there's a lot of reasons for the, for the things that he did. Uh, the, the issue comes into play that he also is, doesn't know that he has, like, 
essentially the spirit of someone else inside him making decisions for him without him realizing, uh, which is demise his hatred, which comes more into play at the end of the game more than right now. Right now he's going to be calm and collected because he is. All he really kind of wants is for his people a fertile land. Okay. So then you're talking about how we, this link, uh, after the time, yep. is obviously reincarnated in the link, yep. the hero. The hero. Yep. Does this link have, also have a, a title or a name? Or is that from this movie? The hero type. Oh, the hero type. Yeah, he, he, will, time. Give, yeah, he, will, get, he will give the title the hero type at the end of the game. That's what I was wondering about. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to make an addition. Yeah, boy, I asked my previous question. What's previous question? The one about the bloodline of the royal line. Okay. I think I said the OG link. I was thinking of the manga link that was the hero of the spirit take on. Yeah. They're the bloodline of Skyward Sword. Oh, well, yes. Right? Okay. Link, link the chosen hero. Yeah. He's the chosen hero? Yeah. So link the, the hero, hero is the manga link. Link the chosen hero. hero. The hero of the Skyward Sword. Link the chosen hero. I was a little bit man. Meaning that 
the golden triangle just kind of popped out again. And that's when Yannon came into play, and I was like, I found it. Got him. We got him, boys. So when you mean by when that leak grabbed the sword and was sealed, was he frozen and then for seven years and then after the seven years passed he unfroze or did seven years pass through him instantly? So the, let's oh. say that there was an observer in that room they, and they decided to wait for seven years. It looked like Link grabbed the sword and stuck there in place for seven years and then grew up to be 16 years old and then that's when he took out the sword. That's when to an absorber. Internally, Link's spirit was sealed inside the second room where he grew up and then Raoul like undressed him and gave him clothes of the humor Because Raoul had also sealed an essence of himself inside the seal he made. Uh, so, now you mentioned that. Now question. Yeah. Did he experience those seven years? Yeah, he did not. Or did, was he, for him, it was just, he pulled the sword and then he was just, oh, he, 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 knew, he pulled the sword, he got hairy arms, hairy balls, and a dick. <laughs> okay, or right. balls, rather, just straight up balls. He didn't have balls before. Yeah, he had a big one, but he didn't have balls before. That was nuts for him. Imagine. Who the fuck sealed themselves and undressed him and stuff? Uh, no, which was a siege. Way earlier before, during the intro of the war, where there were certain groups of individuals who attempted to take this triborders using magic, uh, he, after that shit, said never again, and sealed the triborders and the realm that it lives in inside, not inside, but locked behind the idea of pulling out the masters of Because he figured no one else would ever put it again, because there's never been a need for it. Right, so that was like, that was even before the, the re emergence of the demon trap. So Ganon caught him in 4K. He caught him in 4K. <laughs> he was a, the Ganondor's plan was that this kid's gonna open the door, he's gonna like give me access to the sacred girl, I kill the kid, and I get the Triforce. It worked even more in his favor that the kid just kind of. <laughs> 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 Well, it works for me, he just walked right into the sacred girl. That's a function, I love it. Yep. And the moment that Ganon attempted to touch the Triforce, the thing about the Triforce, for some reason, and, and you could consider this an intervention by the Golden Goddesses, or you could not. But, sorry. Uh, I may have to re-explain the Silent Romans, but and the Sacred Romans, it's the same thing. So, the Silent Realm and the Sacred Realm always portray the Ethereal Realm, essentially, of this universe always portray what is in your heart's intentions. And during the test of Hylia, like that would take place in the side of Rome, the place always just kind of looked like Skydog or like uh, the, the Naval Province or Elder Province or whatever. Except that they had these uh, like warriors inside of them, like feet program warriors. And to the second room, Ganondorf had a twisted heart. So his version of what he saw was a Hyrule under his control. But he focused, essentially his spirit was too aligned with power and not aligned enough with the idea of prosperity and wisdom and grace of uh, courage. So the moment that he made the wish, only the triangles of power that shot to him and the other two split off the heart going into leave the hero time of this and the other one going into the then nine year old, ten year old Princess Zelda. That's the Triforce of Wisdom. Uh, that is the also first official split of the Triforce ever since Skyward Sword Link put it back together. Actually no, he found it all together. My bad. This is the first official split of the Triforce in our period of time. He splits the shit out of more times after it's always a goddamn dumb bitch. You know, whisk of my ass. Uh, <laughs> oh, God damn, I'm fucking here. I'm going to go. You know, I'm out of fire. Oh. Uh, yeah, high wisdom style, low wisdom is out of fire. So, Link of Leroy gets on the 16 year old, and he's told everything went to fucking shit, yo. Everything's gone. Everything's broken. You were sealed for seven years. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> you would have to fix it, unfortunately, because you actually did manage to pull out the Master Sword before the period, like Joseph Hero. Uh, 
So he sends him off on a quest where he has to free the temples of the evils that Ganon has plagued the entire world. What Link wouldn't know at that time is that he would have to witness the death of every single friendship that he had formed as a child as he's trying to save these temples. So he first heads out to the Bukiri Forest, the home that he naturally would think of. Like, well, I know where that temple is. That temple is in the last world, but it's not the last world. It's not that. Uh, well, I've gone to the temple a bunch of times. I know where it is. I know where Saria is. She's probably still there. She's probably cooking. It's cool. Uh, she does. He does find Saria, and Saria is like, "Yo, some shit has been going down for the past seven years." Uh, and I think I finally found the source. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm going to try to stop it. By the time Link finds the same source that she found, Saria is nowhere in sight. And it's the same story for the Gorons and his sworn brother Verunia, who inside the fire temple says, Volvagia has been reborn. What the fuck? That was Ganon's doing. He's eating all the Gorons. I need to stop them. And he went in without the Megaton hammer. Same thing. Link shows up, Verunia is gone. Princess Ruda, same thing. He shows up to the water temple. Prince Ruda informs him, there's a fucking water draining amoeba that somehow just showed up. Ganondorf's doing it. It's killing all of the Zora, literally sucking the light out of us. 95% water. Same thing. She hails in the head, she knows who the source is. She most likely suffocated to death. Every time they showed up to fight the boss, they were already gone. And they re meet in the spirit realm as they are reborn as sages. Uh, just uh, general chosen allies of the hero. But they did have to die to be reborn that way. Link is losing friends left and right. I know, like, I skipped over a lot of uh, Saria's friendship with Link. The idea of, like, the sworn brotherhood that Link had with the Gorons. And that kind of crush that uh, Princess Ruto got back to Link, that Link never really reciprocated anyways. But it's a tension he never had before growing up, he bullied. Uh, he's just seeing people die left and right, not necessarily in front of his eyes yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, so life kind of sucks, but he's slowly clearing out the evil and slowly shifting back into the Shadow Temple, uh, where he's helping out people left and right. He's helping out a uh, lone lone ranch where he remembers that he met this girl at Hyrule Castle called Malo and her father Talo. And like, he kind of liked Malo because she herself was also an outcast from Hyrule. She lived at this ranch, hella far away. She raised horses. Her dad was really strict. She never really, like, can't, never really uh, talked to other Hyrule. So kind of like him, an outcast to Hyrule, she herself was also an outcast. And he he kind of bonded with that. It's like, um, you ain't fucked with me. Uh, absolutely, go ahead. Uh, it's, uh, I'll get into that because I will explain it after the end of our favorite time. So it is canon that, uh, the hero time at Malone, fuck. Uh, if he do it out of all of them, he, he forgets pussy. Goes for the ranch girl. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Um, once he realizes that sometimes he has to go into the past and sometimes into the future, I've established that that connection in time is less like a direct connection like a territory where it's directed to a specific point in time and it's more like a bridge, a seven year gap bridge. Where if a day passes in the future and you go back seven years, it's still a day afterwards. Just seven years in the past. So he does have a time limit before events that Ganondorf created or irreversible, where he would travel seven years back in the past and now it's just seven years when he showed up. He has, he has maybe a couple of weeks to figure this shit out. Uh, and in that time of traveling back and forth, he discovers that there was a second in command that during the time of Ganondorf's coup, the second in command, command of Ganondorf, the guru, said that enough is enough. Uh, and attempted to Except that his mother's now the 400 year old, which is uh, the whole universe just because of Spandroba. 
steal her away. And four tricks become an iron knuckle against her wall. Uh, it's just a giant knight cut in armor. Uh, in the past, Nate finds her, he friends her, and the is like, hey, you're pretty cool, you know, for a kid. Go ahead. You mentioned the giant armor, right? Yeah. Is this the game with the dark man? Yeah, dark man. That's the dark man? That's the dark man. Oh, I knew it. I knew it so there. I tried to make sure it was So, the so Nick made another friend in the past, a couple of days, like, after realizing that shit's getting fucked in the future. He sees her, gets sealed away, goes to the future, attempts to save her, sees her die out of his eyes, uh, after freeing her from her actual seal, it's all going down to a <laughs> Everyone that he's meeting, he's seeing die. Every one of his childhood friends, he's seeing die. The only person he's really relying on is his companion, Navi, uh, to like, keep him sane. Because uh, the only thing that he's burdened with is his apparent purpose to save Hyrule. But, uh, and that's not really living a regular normal life. For a nine-year-old. For a fucking nine-year-old in a 16-year-old body. Uh, it reaches the point where he saves Hyrule a lot of other places. All the sages awaken and he is finally going to go back to uh, confront Ganon. So he goes, heads back into the temple time where he's going to talk to Raul about what he does to do next. And there, uh, uh, he's fine. Sheik has been going around. This is the game where Sheik's in. Uh, that was also the eating link in the future, seven years ahead of the 16. Uh, and this is where the reveal that Sheik was actually Zelda the entire time appears. Where he arrives and says, I'm so glad that you cleared all the evil. Because now we can get down to business. And Sheik reveals herself to hold the Typhers of Wisdom and reveals herself to be the Prince of Zelda. God damn, yeah, Belvedic should have realized. <laughs> Ganondorf was keeping a close eye on Link. The moment she revealed to be the Zelda, she gets trapped in a fucking purple ruby. She gets trapped in a fucking seal. And uh, Ganondorf sweeps her up. And so Link's like, God damn, dumb bitch. And goes uh, to the Ganondorf Tower. Finds up uh, the tower fighting the ship of the things. Getting up to the created battle. And the creation of three timelines. Right at this time. One of them being where... <laughs> He arrives at the room, Ganon gives a speech of these powers are too uh, great for you, turn them back to me. And he really fucking kills him. <laughs> uh, he really just sucker punches him, kills him, gets the Triforce of Courage from his body, gets the Triforce of Wisdom from the Sealed Zelda, completes the Triforce, and the last ditch attempt, the sages seal Ganondorf in his full Triforce of Glory, into the sacred realm, kind of like Raoul had done once before in the long past. That's one of the timelines. The other timeline, Link doesn't really do that. And just to dodge uh, a blast from Ganon, they fight, Link prevails. Ganon, not wanting to give up, uses the strike of power to transform into actually Ganon. Ganon does not want to but transforms into Ganon using the strike of power. And Link using various items and the skill set that he's acquired along the way, and just to defeat Ganon. This is, I mean, they're all canon enemies, but this is what's both considered to be the true enemy of the whole time. Where you always follow the hero, no matter what. At the end of the Ocarina of Time, we have to explain the ending of Ocarina of Time. <sighs> We're almost done. Because even after this, all the games that happen afterwards don't really matter. <laughs> we can literally skip two Breath of the Wild after Ocarina of Time, because nothing else comes to that. Like, yeah, Wind Waker matters, because, like, that's, like, I already. <laughs> Wind Waker is where Ganon explains his motivations that he had before the Hyrulean Civil War. We already know what the Hyrulean Civil War. I've already found it, like, essentially, according to uh, our chronology, all the events we find out after our Hyrulean Civil War. Go ahead. Sorry, I just want to ask, is the only reason why you might explain the Hyrulean Civil War and the War in it is very much well, no, it, like, it leads it to, to, to its own, like, conclusion, but I'll get to that. So, the are doing a time ending, where Link defeats Ganondorf. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, 
uh, I didn't mean to interrupt, but on the topic of what you said, it was Ganondorf, the same Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time and Game Wind Waker? Yes. It's the same dude? The same one. Is it that far in the future, or is that just... It's a magic shenanigan. It's, it's magic shenanigans? Okay. But at this point in time, is he the Echo of Hades? Yeah. Ganondorf is the first he known as an incarnation of the Mises of Malice. Okay. Yep. Yep. But, uh, so... The ending of Ocarina of Time. Of course, Zelda is an absolute dumb bitch. <clears throat> Once Link defeats Ganondorf, Zelda sees a broken child in a 16-year-old body. Or he's lost fucking everything. And she obviously feels really bad about it. So using her own inner power uh, as a sage of light uh, and using the Ocarina of Time, she sends Link back in time to a point before he ever grabbed the Master Sword and before he attained, after he attained the Kokiri Emerald from the Great Negro Tree, but before he attained the uh, Sapphire of the Zoras or the Ruby from the Gorons. And in the events of the time that Zelda sent him back, it appeared like her hero just disappeared, obviously more becoming a secret of the royal family that she sends him away. Uh, out of pity, almost. Like, she just pitied him, like, he was a broken kid. Like, now his purpose defeated, but like, he really had nothing to look for anymore, essentially. Uh, so she wanted to return that child back to him. God damn it, that's bitch. The moment that Zelda sent him back without the use of the Master Sword, she created a timeline script where the Master Sword like time gap wasn't a true loop. It was a bridge. So no matter what, the bridge always keeps going, it's just slanted. She sends him back without the use of the Master Sword, meaning that in her timeline, the Master Sword was still, like, taken out. Like, essentially, when she sent him back, the Master Sword just got dropped and laid there. Link also had a Triforce of Courage in her timeline. When she, the moment she sent him back in time, the Triforce was still completely unified inside the Sacred Realm, sealed with the Master Sword. The moment he touched back into that timeline and crossed the Sacred Realm, Sacred Realm was always used as a as a gateway into everything. Parallel universes, different timelines, etc. The moment he crossed the sacred realm and entered back into his original timeline, there was a paradox. There were two side forces of courage. So how did it correct itself? And it did correct itself. Link's tribe of courage from the above timeline shattered. But he received the tribe of courage as he passed through into that time. So in the time where Ganon never touched the Triforce, he still ended up splitting the Triforce in the Child Timeline, where one would eventually end up in Ganondorf's power, the other one would eventually end up in Wisdom and Zelda's power. But where's Mickey Mouse? <laughs> <laughs> I re I re step I re I'm sorry I fucked you up there. Shit. Sorry. Another one, two, three. My, my bad. I, I fucked you up there. I don't want to keep talking about it. I didn't see you. I said I'm fuck how long the questions were actually so I have a question about this. Yes, yes. I just yeah. Uh here you go, here you go. Um uh, so you said that when Link was fighting Ganondorf, the way the Triforce corrected itself, or like the Sacred Realm corrected itself, break the paradox. It basically, obviously, you already mentioned that it shattered the Triforce of Courage into the Dead Yep. And then the Dead Sand Line. And the Reverse Sand Line. So he went back without it, or with an extra one, to correct itself. The Triforce stole the soul of itself. The type of game in the type of courage, which means it had to split off, and the power would eventually find its way into Ganondorf, still, and the type of wisdom would eventually find its way to the So it basically forced, it was a way around 
breaking that seal that was originally put to keep the Triforce in the... Yeah, even though it was all done on accident. This Prince is always a dumbass bitch. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was it was a cheat around the seal. Yep. Yep. Okay. It was a cheat around the seal because he traveled through the second realm without a connection that made it safe. Do you think when the master sword just fell, yeah. Zelda was like, Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely! Because not only did the master sword just Oh yeah, the giant sword was literally shattered in front of her. The giant sword was shattered in front of her. It's like she had like, physical pieces. Like she probably put, collected, but sweeped up the pieces. <laughs> You're gonna eat it, right? Absolutely. I got a question. So I have another question. Yeah. Hey, Chase, I want you to gag all the way through while you eat that. Oh, you oh, eat it and ask the question. Yeah. Oh. 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 You have like 30 seconds to get the question out. I mean, it's a short question. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Right. Are you going to bite that or you going to say this? Eat it then question. No, no, no. You have to eat a whole pepper. Oh, yes. You have seven. Okay. I'm, yeah. <sighs> Okay, like it is, they want you to eat it and then ask the question. Okay. <laughs> I love you, Chance. So, is this like a. I use the Triforce to destroy the Triforce time of this way? No. Because she used the Triforce to not right? She used her powers as a Sage of Light, her innate power to use the Triforce of Wisdom to send her back and forth. Okay. And then the power of the Ocarina of Time was also allowed, and, uh, allowed some basic time of that's all I need to know. Yeah, even she, she found a way to help him, where the only way to really help him was just to put that goddamn sword back. And he would have went back in time. I goddamn dumb bitch. I hate it. It's stupid saliva. Anyway. God damn. It's all her fault. Like, she must have done it immediately. There you go. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. <laughs> The other thing, yeah. you said that the questions are delaying you. Yeah. Just don't you keep going. Right? Now, you, you stop us and interrupt us when you want. Uh, I uh, think they're funny. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Sorry. Honestly, yeah. this is a really fucked up NRG still. Yes. And then it's the, uh, yeah, it actually is. It just, but that's, that is the timeline split. That is the infamous timeline split of uh, The Legend of Zelda. Where, you know, one of them, he dies. And just, that's, that's what most of the issue of uh, a lot of Zelda fans have. Is that it's such a fucking bullshit thing to say, oh, one of them is the infamous kind of time. Yeah. It is hyper specific that he specifically dies against Ganondorf, not against anyone else. Whatever. There's not really a question, but more like a comment that. It does make sense that he would die because the original Link the Hero does die. Yeah, Link the Hero does die. Like Nintendo has framed it in such a way that it always makes sense. Or is it intentional or not? Who knows? But they have framed it in such a way that it's almost like, oh yeah, it does kind of make sense, doesn't it? Huh? If you think about it, because <laughs> uh, that is a way to go around the idea of the timeline. Which good for them. The timeline's stupid, <laughs> but I love the stupidity. Um, but yes, it does make sense. The link, link the hero dies, so eventually his like real true first incarnation. Obviously, the hero's are linked. The hero time link is easily the actual truest incarnation of uh, Link the hero. Does that? Just so that I'm not suffering. Oh, okay. Ah! Um, um, I came up here so my suffering's on camera. Yeah. It's the first to eat a goat pepper. Can I give it to Mary the Thugger? Why are you doing Because he's not paying attention to playing with swords! What? I want to be teacher's pet. No. God damn it. This is a man. This is a man. Yeah, but that is by far the longest part of the From here, I think it's 
the idea of one way period not being relevant, it's not that like it's so drastically different. Is that I already explained the relevance of Wind Waker and Ganon's motivations that he only reveals in Wind Waker, but they're present before Operating on Time. Uh, that's the most relevant part of Wind Waker, aside from uh, after the fucking bullshit that Zelda did, she causes <laughs> a, like an era of unstable peace in Hyrule because their hero disappeared and the Triforce is shattered. Which leads into Ganon being able to come out and terrorize the planet and do it. What is the Wind Waker? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wand. Oh, it's the wand? Yes. Oh, so it's another like, instrument named him. Okay. Uh, the only like major relevance of Wind Waker was the motivations that Ganon had. Otherwise, it just tells another tale of a complete reincarnation of Ninja Hero inside another kid, who, besides his TV form, is as most of his fun facts now. In Outside Island, Island, they say that they can see that guard when they are the age of the hero. And everyone's been like, oh, so he's like 9 or 10. Except that the age of the hero that they know about is 16. So even though he's super chibi, he's most likely like 15, 16. Fucking you. Go ahead. This is a really honest question. Um, does Nintendo, or is, is there an official reason to why the, like, I guess, did Link the Heroes always considered, or always named after Link? Like, is there, is that just a really popular name? It's just or? a popular name. Okay. Just like Zelda. Uh, like, they explain the reason why princesses are named Zelda, like, 50 times, and it's always different. Uh, like one of the, like one time a king just decides, you know what? Every woman born into the royal family will be named Zelda. And sometimes it's just like every once in a while we think she's a Zelda, but like blonde hair, we'll just name her Zelda. Uh, it always changes, but Link is probably just a really popular name. I've also chosen that the Goron was named Link. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, and the Wind Waker story just leads into the finding of Link. And that, that's where that story ends. So you find new Hyrule and another Hyrule begins. In the child timeline, we get more tragedy to play. As now sent into the past, he has to prove that he isn't bullshit yet. Uh, so he saves Princess Guru again, saves the Gorons again, becomes Warren Brothers again, just to prove like, this is things that I know that I shouldn't know, but I do know because I'm from the future man. Uh, he goes through that whole process just to prove that Ganondorf is full of shit. Ganondorf humiliated, goes back into the river, he severs himself from the high ruling and alliance, uh, and climbs another war for a couple of years. Uh, he militarizes his entire uh, empire. Oh, he militarizes his entire people while Link is essentially in a journey of self discovery. At the end of Ocarina of Time, the army just fucking flies away like a goddamn bitch. Uh, and that, like I said, that is the only companionship he had in the entire game. The entire game is just losing <laughs> all his friends. So she leaves, and Link just kind of repeats some things he already did. Like, oh, he confronted Malone, he gets a Kona, uh, he has Zelda for the Ocarina of Time, all this shit that he shouldn't know, but he's proving he does know, so that they trust him. And he goes on a soul search, which leads into Majora's Mask. And Majora's Mask is confirmed to be a parallel universe that you can enter, but it is not actually found inside the world that the Kingdom of Hyrule is in, which is not the first time that happens either. <laughs> uh, he comes back, that's when he bags Madeline, for that same reason. Like, Madeline's the only person that I was always holding distance from the Hylians, so he is even like, sent back in time, it didn't do many favors. He was still an outcast, and Kokiri, like, I mean, aside from Saria, like, Kokiri never really acknowledged him. Uh, the Hylian never acknowledged him, because he was so weird and different. He was a Kokiri, except he was a Hylian, that is different, that's weird, we're not gonna like you. Uh, so he went together with Mala, and he became a Hylian Knight. That's, you know, that's all the skill set he had. Years pass, Ganondorf finds out that the fucking snot nosed kid that ratted him out. I'm hiding right now. I figured 
And that's when we launched what became known as the Garudo Hybrid War, which is essentially the Second Civil War. That launching the Garudo Hybrid War most likely led into two things that make uh, Twilight Princess, that lead into Twilight Princess. Mala and Ling most likely either conceived, she was either pregnant or she already had the child. And she, they repeated the same history of Ling's mother without him knowing. That Ling obviously knowing that Saria will always be willing to help him in the Kofiri forest, sends Mala on the way, knowing that Kana is coming. With either carrying his child or his child already born. And that's where they would start more down village, which eventually became part of the process. Like inside the Kofiri forest. Like as a favor from Saria. Ling most likely immediately went to confront Gabriel. Kind of already knowing what he loved to. Except he was way in over his head this time. And he didn't exactly have the destiny plot armor that he died before. And it is most likely the case that Gandalf managed to kill Link, but Link did manage to stop the war at the moment by severely damaging Gandalf. And Gandalf was captured and sentenced to an execution that the dumbass bitch future Zelda, since sending Link back in time, at the moment of his execution, the type of power awakened him and reviving him and him managing to kill the Sage of Water, which the Sage of Water was the one who tried to execute him. But I might remind you that the Sage of Water originally was Princess Rudo, and in that timeline he did save Princess Rudo again. It's entirely possible that it was Princess Rudo who wanted to execute Gandalf for killing Link. Uh, and Link full of regrets for his entire fucking life. Literally never having anything, he eventually became known as a hero shade, which passed down his techniques to his direct bloodline in Twilight Princess. The other timeline when he dies, starts a cycle of a hero is born, Ganon comes back, Ganon dies, and the hero kills the And then he keeps going back anyway. So the theme is about uh, the leak dying and passing on the training to his uh, lineage. Is that the one with like the, the, the skeletonized one? Yeah, that's the Eurozen. Oh, that's good. That is, that is confirmed to be the Eurozen. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the most tragic thing to ever exist. Uh, uh, I pass over like any emotional relevance that would matter. That's, that's, but uh, yeah. And the, the downfall timeline where Link dies just sets the precedent for an era where the type is in shambles. Ganon constantly comes back, dies, comes back, dies, comes back, dies. And all of them, a fucking million years later, apparently in some way or another, where we still have no confirmed placement for where the rest of the wild should be, is where it starts. Where it's essentially just a soft reboot with its own history. Uh, which, like, as I started going through the lecture, I may just do a revisit of Breath of the Wild. Uh, and I might end it here. Breath of the Wild is so ahead of the timeline, it's even like, the Force Era was fucking easily like 50,000 years from Skyward Sword to Ocarina of Time. Like, it was a crazy amount of time, and even more than that, just because of the evolution of the Zoros. Uh, Breath of the Wild is million years, or more, after that, uh, and Aluma has deconfirmed the, the, the timeline of deconvergence theory that eventually so much time passes that all three just kind of became one. That's deconfirmed by Aluma. It is at the end of a timeline, and it is most likely, in my opinion, at the end of the decline timeline where Link dies, where the cycle of Ganon coming back, dying, coming back, dying, coming back, dying, is a theme of the world. But it could also be in the child time. It really could, uh, just because it's the true ending of Ocarina of Time. It's the one that follows Link still. Uh, it can, it, it's impossible for it to be the event, just given the fact that it's not a new title. Uh, like the Kyrie, the uh, Koroks exist, which is another race, descendants of the Kyrie, but the Koroks could exist without Link. They're just, um, like, they're just a blessing that the Great Dragon Tree provided to the a uh, great flood doesn't have to happen for that blessing to be received. And I think a part two would happen with Breath of the Wild. I think I'd rather just wait for Breath of the Wild too than get into this from Breath of the Wild right now. Who doesn't But yeah, that is the Zelda timeline 
in a nutshell, with most of it just being occurring on time. Fucking nuts. Uh, yeah, wait. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, that's, that's it. Okay. Woo! I have three questions that I wrote down, like overarching ones. Yep. So first question is, does any incarnation of Link that you will ever realize he's a reincarnation yep. ever? Ever. Okay. Ever. Uh, second question, is there a reason, or is there ever a reason given why the goddesses never revealed themselves? Uh, there's never a reason for it, but uh, mostly going off like the events of the games, they, they don't really care what happens. Like more problems are moral problems, right? Or is King of Dragons and Super falling down? It's not their problem. Their problem is the creation of their own divine artifact. And if someone wants to take it completely, they're not cool with that. And they send it to someone to intervene, like the Dragon's own spirits. Otherwise, they really don't give a shit because they let Ganon. <laughs> take control of one of the pieces, uh, or rather, they let him transform Hyrule into his own version. But that's also kind of the point of the Tritons to mold the earth however someone sees fit. Okay, my last question is why don't some people agree with this official Nintendo timeline? It's the entirety of the Nintendo. That's, that's the major point. So, I'm, so I might not be fully aware of what, I, what happens in these games, but I yeah. have an like understanding that during Oracle of Ages and Seasons, yeah. the goddesses have human representations? Uh, not, not confirmed. They do have, there are oracles that exist that have the same name as the goddesses, and they are used to power flames to try to revive Gat. And one of these like games where Gat is has to either get revived and then but they don't seem to have they could be incarnations like the goddess or like Zelda from the goddess Aya. Oh and there is no supporting evidence of that. Yeah. yeah, that is it. I love the Oracle games, but they actually know better for the <laughs> But I know the door's fast, it doesn't matter to the timeline. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, I guess since we've been touching on it, what is Terminal? Terminal is a parallel universe, like Low Roll. Uh, Low Roll is also a parallel universe. Uh, Low Roll, but they don't matter. Okay. But they are coming up the parallel universe, you could just walk into it. You could just straight up walk into it. It's like a, it's like a, a, a crack in the sacred realm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Which, the crack honestly could have done because all of them done it. So that's it? That's it.